10 gifted subs? Ten tier, holy cow, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate it. And good morning, by the way, to everyone. What's up, Snoot? Good. I had a, I had a day yesterday, so I was debating on whether or not I'd actually stream today. Just take the day off. Next week is going to be grueling. I'm going to have a lot of streaming under my belt. Huh, bag of pistachios over here. What's going on here? What's up, bag of pistachios? I'm not just calling you that. I actually have a bag of pistachios. <laughs> you just call me a bag of pistachios? What the hell? What's going on? How's it going, Jay? All right, let's see here. Man, Fatanon's tier three was the last thing we got in, huh? Three days ago. Ugh, it's been a weekend. Who the fuck is calling me? Hello? Oh, finally. David from the Vehicle Service Center. Oh, thank you so much for calling me, David. Uh, it feels great to hear your dead mechanical robotic voice. Oh man, I know, I'm responsible for a lot of maintenance on my car. Yeah, this is my last opportunity? Oh my god. Fucking always delete. <laughs> Fucking David from the service center. Hello, we would like to tell you about your... <laughs> I came for the pistachios, I'm sorry, they're all mine. That's a huge bag of pistachios, I think I got that while I was drunk. Uh, <laughs> I had a ton of pistachios, and then I spent the whole next day cleaning them up. <laughs> you get desperate after a little while with pistachios, and you actually start munching on the shells. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe you don't. <laughs> you know David, too? Yeah, David 5005. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, let's see here. What do we have going on? I need to put the camera on the... 3D printer, so that we have 3D printer cam. I got a new mount. I got these little um, snap-in mounts for it, and I can mount the camera on those little bars. No, no pistachios. Father, I request pistachios. Father, please, the pistachios. <sighs> Calls me all the time. Yeah, and my my extended vehicle warranty and and. Um, and the, the the bank that I owe a couple dollars or something. <laughs> Dave, what do you have to do with my extended warranty? Why am I... Why are we still doing this song and dance? No, what I got is I got Pennsylvania election stuff. That's what's going on with my phone. That's 90% of the phone. People don't call each other on the phone anymore. Like, who are they kidding? <laughs> Get with the times, Grandpa. Anyone who calls me is immediately suspicious. Uh, where is my bin of these things? There it is. We're gonna make just like a little snap and mount for the camera. Yeah, I could do that if you want. There you go. <laughs> Even though I, mean, I should just ban the phrase. I should ban the phrase and then I should make um, Nightbot just go stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Excuse me. I wouldn't say I'm exactly under the weather, but I'm definitely not on top of it. Got me feeling the years. I think I'm gonna sand, file off the uh, the little blockers on these things. I need to I need to flatten an angle iron. So yeah, I'm next to the weather. <laughs> it's 
so that I can attach it to this claw, and then the claw can attach to the um, to the 3D printer. So a little bit of filing to start your day, right? We're gonna do a little bit of programming on this thing, on the sim setup. But first, I would like to at least change things up a little bit and do some 3D modeling. Yeah, that's why I'm a little bit out of sorts today is that I finally fucking got my insulin sorted out. And I bitched about it in Discord enough for three lifetimes, but um, part of what happened here is that my doctor, I don't know, is the filing like super loud and distracting? I don't know if I should talk. Maybe I will talk about this with the grating file noises underneath it. <laughs> Maybe that's the appropriate way to talk about this kind of stuff is with some kind of mechanical stress noise going on in the background. Yeah, filing stream. <laughs> How's it going, Uncle Phil? Um, yeah, so... See, all it takes is a couple strokes and then these things are flat. There's an innuendo in there somewhere, but I'm not willing to extract it. Um, so this all, this all started off, this all popped off with my doctor sending the wrong prescription over. And maybe there's a new person. I know those medical systems for, for disseminating uh, RXs and stuff can be very confusing. And I've sort of been through the ringer with them. See, the reason that this went down to the emergency uh, supply of insulin is that one of my medications I was off of for like a week or two this month. So I was off of it for a week or two and so I was using a lot more insulin. And so what ended up happening is this prescription a week ago went to my doctor and they put it in for the wrong type of insulin. This insulin aspart is now part of the formulary. So the doctors who aren't my doctors made this decision for the doctors who are my doctors. They said he should be on insulin aspart because it's the generic equivalent of Novolog and it's a lot cheaper. That's fine, um, but when I requested a refill of insulin aspart, insulin asphart, um, they sent a prescription for Novolog, the brand name, the much more expensive one. So, insurance went, no, 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 no. We need to get a prior authorization in order to make that happen. I go to CVS and they tell me, insurance is waiting for a prior auth. And I'm like, on, on, on insulin, huh? Weird. Funny, they didn't need this before. So then I immediately call my doctor because I have no reason to question CVS Pharmacy. They told me the, the insulin. They didn't use the, the name. So I, uh, I end up calling my, my, my doctor. Meanwhile, messages back and forth with my doctor about getting this insulin pump shit sorted out. They got it every way wrong they possibly could. They sent my pharmacist a prescription for the Omnipod 3 whereas I'm actually looking to get the Omnipod 5. That's all going on in the background, so I'm not really, I don't really have my head to the ground on the insulin thing and what's going on with that. I figure I probably have time. Um, turns out, turns out, on Friday, I discover that it's the wrong prescription for insulin. So they say, my doctor says, they'll sort it out. They'll sort it out. That was, sorry, I find out on Thursday, they'll sort it out. Well, they didn't do anything. They just canceled the insulin prescription. And so I'm like, where's my ass fart? So I go to, on Friday, I talk to the doctor. I phone call them like four times. They say they've got it all worked out. Well, they didn't do anything. No prescriptions went out, not the Omnipod, not the insulin. So on Friday night, I contact the on-call physician after everybody's gone home. On call physician. Oh, click, click, click. Which CVS? Click, click, click. All right, it's done. Two sec, two seconds. I feel like I need to like shake people and then they'll do the two, two clicks of their job so that I don't die. You guys have to understand if I don't have insulin, if I don't have insulin, I die. And I don't just die, I die of diabetic ketoacidosis in a day or two. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a process by which, very simplistically, your blood becomes acid because there's too much sugar in it. There's a lot of stuff going on there physiologically, but what it ends up doing is manifesting in extreme kidney pain. That's when you go to the hospital and you end up in the hospital for a couple days. It has happened to me before. It has happened to me before during the time when I'm streaming, you guys know. Um, it's a very terrible way to die. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemies. People I hate, I would not want them to go like that. 
Um, that's what happens if you don't get insulin. So I'll end up in the hospital and it'll end up costing everybody hundreds of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. Not even the pharmacy. Sometimes they'll give you a free bottle of insulin. Um, so what's happening is I'm starting to run out of insulin. I'm on my last bottle. My last bottle's halfway full. I used half of that to fill up the reservoir on my insulin pump. And then I fasted on Sunday because they finally got the prescription in and I give it a day for them to fill it, right? Saturday, they get the day to fill it. Sunday, rolls around. Where's my insulin? What's going on? Call them. Oh, we don't have it in stock. We'll get it on Monday. Uh, uh, okay, hey, it's me, the guy who is not eating for the next 24 hours. Um, can you like maybe, I don't know, I don't know, like just get it, please? Uh, oh, we'll be able to get it uh, first thing on Monday, first thing on Monday, and I'll fill out the prescription, and then, and then we'll be able to get that to you. Okay, I mean, this is kind of serious. Yep, we'll definitely do it. We'll definitely do it. By the way, I'm still speaking to the same guy. We checked around local CVSs, and CVS, when they answer the phone, I think they ha they're required to sigh, because CVS fights you. They don't let you speak to the pharmacy, and I've actually learned how to get through their phone message very quickly to get to the pharmacist. You have to be very rude to the robot. The robot starts talking, and you have to immediately say no twice. So you, oh, but, 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 no. Uh, okay, but we have a prescription that you can know. What what can I help you with? And you're like, pharmacy. And then it's like, COVID-19 uh, vaccinated other. You have to shout, you just shout it down every time, other. And then it goes, oh, uh, what can I help you with? And you're like, speak to the pharmacy, fuck's sake. And then it finally, oh, I see you probably want to speak to the pharmacy. Otherwise, it wastes your, your whole fucking day in the menus. But, but then when you finally speak to the pharmacist, the last little sliver of the psychological torture is that the person you speak to is angry at you to start. They go, oh, CVS, what do you want? <laughs> You're like, the fuck? Pee pee thy fuck. What the hell, man? Um, so anyway, nobody had it in stock. So I had to get prescriptions transferred around constantly and eventually discover that nobody has it in stock. So I had to wait till Monday. So I wasn't eating Monday, right? I wasn't eating all of Sunday, which I'm going to do from now on, I think, actually, to be honest. I, I, need to, I need to get on the other side of the caloric equation. So in order to do that, I think not eating is probably going to be my... Sunday is for fasting, maybe. Yeah, you can usually mash the buttons or you can you can start shouting operator at it. But they've not made that work in recent memory. So you have to do the voice menu. You can actually hit buttons too, I think. But uh, I don't know the button mash combo. I don't know, I don't know the Konami code for that operator. So you just have to interrupt it while it's talking. Um so yeah, so Finally got the prescription sorted out. Turns out it wouldn't be there till Monday. Monday rolls around. 11 o'clock. I give him a call. Because that's what they said. They said, eh, give it till 11 o'clock. So I give it till 11 o'clock. Give him a call. Oh, yeah, it's here. Uh, we can't, f we, we can fill it like later in the afternoon. Oh, there's the, uh, there's the Dave 5005. Um, yeah, we can, we can, uh, we can fill it later in the afternoon. I'm like, could you maybe fill it right away? Cause uh, I've, you know, my entire life is on hold until I get this prescription. We're really busy today. I'm like, uh, like, <laughs> I am literally at risk of death right now, my guy. Expediency is literally for this very scenario. <sighs> a similar experience, I just started yelling at the Xfinity robot lady and ended up with an operator. I get frustrated at those menus and I just go operator, 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 or representative, 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 and you just keep saying it until they, until they put you to the right thing. Oh, excuse me, um, I was wondering if maybe you would like to listen to our services about- No! Just give me a fucking operator already. I will start throwing hands. Um, so yeah, they- they then don't fill my prescription. Hey, Wexo. Wexo, I have that. I have that filament. I want to try to build something with it, but all of my bank accounts are fucked up right now. So I, I, I got to wait for my bank accounts to settle out. And then I'll... Uh, I got something I want to print with that ABS, given the settings that you've, you've, you've told me to do. Um, the... Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the bank account stuff in a second. This has been a fucking trip the past couple days. 
Um, so any, this is why I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm up to streaming. <laughs> I don't know if I want to stream. I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm angry at the world right now, chat. Uh, everything is fucking me over right now. Anyway, uh, so, so no insulin, right? Nobody's filled it. Nobody's done anything. Uh, okay. So they tell me it'll be ready. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll get it ready in like an hour or so. Like, all right. So I then wait for the CVS to text me. Three o'clock rolls around, still nothing. Like, okay. All right, so I go to CVS. I actually go to the local pharmacy where this where this fucker is that's been jerking me off for a couple of days. Um, and I actually go there and talk to the lady behind the counter who then goes, gets four bottles of insulin out of the fridge, hands them to one of the guys that's working, and in two minutes I get my prescription. So like, they basically talked to me and then didn't do anything until I was actually there. I'm I'm so mad I could spit. <laughs> like, I'm so mad, I'm so mad. I am so mad. Um, but yeah, I finally got the insulin. And it, it, it may have been that the pharmacist had actually also filled it out, because it looks like when the lady got the, the, the stuff with it in the bag, she then handed it to the pharmacist, and I think they swapped bags. So I think they might have filled it, but they never notified me. All probably as revenge for asking for expediency. I mean, like, fucking talk to corporate or something. It's like, this is insulin, man. I don't know what kind of priority medications other people are getting from your pharmacy, but this one should probably skip to the front of the line. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. This one is a little bit important. Unless you want to actively participate in putting somebody in the hospital. But it was literally in two minutes the prescription was ready to go. No, I can't, because literally all of the... So I call this CVS, and the guy is actually like, oh, sure, yeah, let me absolutely do this for you. It's important, yes. And then he ignores me, whereas the other pharmacies go, what do you want? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's all so fucked. It's so fucked. Why do I go to CVS? I don't know. I don't know at this point, and I'm too afraid to ask. <laughs> They're looking for bolts that are compatible with these camera mounts. It's so fucked up. And then all the meanwhile, you know, I'm trying to get my um, my Omnipod prescription to be sent to the right place, and it just doesn't do it, right? Um, and then I have the problem with PayPal. That's a totally different animal. The problem with PayPal is that I bought that graphics card, right? I bought the Radeon. It's sitting on my desk, and I accidentally double bought it. And so I had the, the, the transaction was canceled, right? Transaction was canceled. Perfectly fine thing to do. It cancels right away and immediately. Well, PayPal being what it is. Let's see if I can find a matching fastener. PayPal being what it is decided to double draw the money from my account. And in doing so, overdrew it. Which is great. It's great. I love it when that happens, right? It overdrew it. My bank, my, my actual bank that holds my money, threw hands and they said, hell no, we don't have that money. And so PayPal refunded, or sorry, uh, the, the, the seller re refunded the money immediately. PayPal went, oh, okay, never mind, right? And that should have been the end of it. But because they weren't able to draw the money, because they weren't able to draw the money, they tried again in three days. And so that three days was Monday. Or it was, sorry, it was in the middle of the weekend. So my bank account was like back into the negatives. And I'm like, what the fuck? I put a lot of money into my bank account, so this wouldn't happen. It was a negative $3. I was like, what the hell? I like just deposited a shit ton of money into there. Um, so it's like, what, uh, PP thy fuck, what the hell's going on? And so I check and, and you know, I had to call PayPal. And PayPal's like, oh, it's just the automated system. The money, the money will be returned like right away. I'm like, okay. And so they do that, and then it takes a week for the money to show up. It takes six days for PayPal to say, ah, oh, never mind, we didn't get the money. So my bank account is just like hanging out in the negatives for a while. I have a stack of letters from, from my bank. <laughs> I have a stack of letters from my bank, all because uh, automated systems. 
I'm so mad right now. Like nothing, absolutely nothing that I've tried to work out has worked out. And every single, now I do have, oh, sorry. Hit a button on the, I hit a button. The old wallet act to me. Yeah, it's, it's all, the wallet is on a fast. I was on a fast. You know, all the meanwhile, I'm not allowed to eat. Fucking ridiculous. I'm, I'm just so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad at everything right now. I'll be all right. I have insulin. I have insulin. That's the important bit. I have insulin. And it's like nothing is anybody's fault, except maybe my endocrinologist fucking everything up. I, 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 I'm going to have I'm going to have words with my doctor the next time I see him. I'm going to have words. I might throw hands. Hopefully it's a teledoc visit and then I can just beat up my computer. I'm not finding another one of those fasteners. That might have been the last one. And this is kind of loud, just sorting through this stuff, so. Oh man, I, I just, I just want, <laughs> I just want the stuff. I, I've got five refills on the insulin now, so this shouldn't happen again. You know, usually there's a little grace period between getting the prescriptions and stuff. So if I start fasting on Sunday, hopefully I'm liable to build up a little bit of extra insulin here and there. But like the doctors automatically, um, prescribing a certain amount of insulin a month based on the numbers that are automatically given to him by my pump. <sighs> Shouldn't happen again. Yeah, no, that's about as true as it gets. It's uh, every now and every now and again, I suddenly have to play the supply supply officer game where I have to try to get supply, crucial medical supplies to myself. It's like just it's just another one of the hard mode mechanics. The, the diabetes need the diabetics need to need to deal with. You need to be good at calling people and putting it to them and getting them to actually do their job and stuff like that. And 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 figuring out what the secret is to why you're you're not getting your your prescription filled. And this time the secret was that it wasn't the right insulin. But nobody told me. Nobody told me it wasn't the right insulin. So, anyway, I've almost got almost got this thing worked out. I'll just use the wrong screw. It's a, an English sized one. And that means that I can mount the 3D printer camera just a little bit better. I can just sort of move it from one thing to the other. Yeah, I, I don't understand how they can charge for insulin either. Blah, blah, innovation, blah, blah, this and that. But it's a 20 year old formula. It's a 20 year old formula. Where's my innovation? Why am I spending $300 for something that I, I will die if I don't get, you know? And I will die if I don't get insulin. So it's not exactly an elective thing. Treat it like it is. All right, so there's that. Let me move the camera over. We'll see what it looks like. See if I can't get a good angle now on the 3D print happening. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Let's flip over to that camera. Hopefully it's not frozen. Yeah, I mean, in other countries, it just gets delivered to you. Uh, no house, no fuss, no muss, no trouble. Everybody pays a little bit of taxes for it. Honestly, I would, I would love for my taxes to pay for people to get insulin instead of turning, you know, people into skeletons more efficiently. Pretty good, I can get a good angle on it now. So we're printing on the glass bed and that's purely for cosmetic purposes. Or we can come over here. Let's come over here. Let's try this side, hold on. That might be a little too, oh, maybe that's good. That's a pretty good angle. That way you get the whole experience. Burn the subs in the background too. I can take the wire and put it all the way up here out of the way. Oh wait, there's still a twisty tie on it. I can use the twisty tie. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of production stuff just to set things up. Doing a lot of this 3D printing stuff today because we're trying to get parts done for my computer build. 
Because I got a thing on Saturday that the computer's got to be ready for. All right, so right now that print is cooling. Let's check up on it. From Octopi Local. Yeah, so once those lines cross twice, I have to absolutely, uh, I don't care about new plugins. Uh, I have to let this cool completely because it's on the glass itself. So if I try to force the print off of the glass at all, I am liable to take up chunks of glass with it. So we got to let this completely cool and then the glass is going to change shape and the print's going to change shape a little bit and I'll pop off one another and you can just lift the, the print off. Uh, all right, let's get rid of start soon. Let's get rid of the music. I'm pretty much ready to go on that other print. Uh, I will probably have to generate some of the solids. Well, the prints that I'm doing right now are for the front facade of uh, the computer project. I figure I'm going to print it directly on the glass, and that'll create a glassy, shiny surface out of them. I got that red filament. Hey, Cosmo Quest, how you guys doing? I'm a little out of sorts today. But uh, we got our we got our work cut out for us. You are the reason that I have orange and purple filament for my 3D printer. Hell yeah, dude! I've never found the oranges and the purples, the opaques, to be quite right. They they they're like McDonald's play place colors. You know, they're not quite the right shades. They're too light. They're too pastel. But uh, hey, Cosmo Quest, how's it going? How's it going today? I'm a uh, I'm a little out of it today. I've, I've I had a Monday where I had to play supply warrant officer and get actually get people to do their jobs and get me insulin because apparently that's the lowest priority thing in the world according to my pharmacist. Probably need a new pharmacist. Uh, but yeah, so I finally got all that sorted out yesterday. Uh, we're currently doing a bunch of stuff, so we've got kind of like a miscellaneous project day here going. Uh, and I just I just turned off the start soon thing, so you guys are here just in time. Um, what we have here is my 3D printer, a bit of a, a bit of a close up. I just got a, uh, a new mount for this thing. This is the wrong one. There it is. It's got a new mount for the camera. So now I can have the camera over here. Perhaps you guys might be able to actually see the nozzle as it pukes stuff out onto the, onto the bed. I've got it on the shiny side because I want that glassy, glassy smoothness for my computer project. I just uh, was able to buy a graphics card much to the detriment of my own bank account. Um, and then it, it keeps double charging me for it. And I'm happy, I'm happy about that because that's killing my bank account uh, and piling on fees. It's really great. It's really great. I should use the credit card. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, yeah, so I got the graphics card and so we've been designing around it in order to fit it into the new, uh, into the old computer case. And then I'm red ifying all of the uh, panels. So the panels are going to be red and the only deep, filament color that I've been able to find is this Polymaker PETG stuff. And that has a, like a really, really deep red to it. Um, but I'm not printing it hot enough or wasn't anyway. Uh, I had to, I had to go up 10 degrees Celsius because what I was printing was, it was like pink. Uh, it, it, with PETGs, they, when you extrude them and print them at a certain temperature, they'll, they'll be matte in color. Um, and then when you up that temperature, all of a sudden you gain this glossiness. So on the print, I was on the edge. I was on the edge of the matte versus shiny color. Um, and it creates sort of this ruby, it's very strange. Just a little, the little shape of the, of the stuff that's squishing out of the nozzle will influence uh, how the light hits it properly, right? And so I was getting a lot of pink hues out of, the, uh, out of the reflected light through that filament. The blue didn't do that. The blue was like a deep sapphire. But the red, uh, when it gets more matte, it lightens up and it tends to look a little bit more pink. So I had to up the temperature and then I flipped over and decided to print directly onto the glass. So hopefully that lower layer looks like a deep red that's super reflective. I think that'll be the case, but I'm, I'm just not sure. I haven't printed directly on the glass in a little while. I've been using that surface on the other side that hopefully didn't bond to the surface on the other side of my print bed. Because I haven't flipped this thing yet. Uh, this is the first time that I'm flipping the bed. And uh, I don't know if it'll stick. <laughs> it might. That coating might stick to whatever's under that. I hope it doesn't. Either way, I, I have another one in case I totally screw up this print surface. But that's what we're working on. Use them to accessorize my printer in orange and purple, including the Octopi case. I, I actually want to do new... Um, 
rail guards. The, the ones I have are built for 80-20 rails, and I've got them on 20-20 rails over there. So if you look at that, you can see they're kind of like, they're almost kind of in the way. Uh, and so the I did print out a couple rail guards, and they were they fit inside of the rail. Uh, and that was for the board thing that I have, the thing that I want to light. Um, so I think I'm going to use the blue, the, the deep blue, deepest bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. Uh, I think I'm going to use the deep blue and make uh, rail guards for the printer, make it make it like a deep color. I think that'll be cool. We'll get it away from the orange. All right. So yeah, that's that's kind of the stuff that I'm looking at, like IRL right now. Uh, we we also still have to work in the software here with the simulator setup to try to get this thing up and running. I think it's just a matter of emulating a couple more signals that the the base station wants to listen to. We're gonna save that for like later on in the stream. Um, the other thing that I need to do that's a little bit more fun to look at and it's more fun to do is a little fusion 360 i want to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of device uh, work here because we got a couple things that still need to be sized out on the on the actual uh computer build that will get me ready to do a whole lot of 3d printing on wednesday i would have loved to have today to actually put together the hardware and to get the hardware working but uh, it's just not gonna have i was still i'm still printing i've got a lot of good stuff um, but I think on Thursday we'll be able to do the hardware and then Friday, Saturday, I don't know. Saturday's not happening. Friday may not be happening for me. I'm so done. I'm so done with everything right now. I'm so angry. <laughs> I'm so angry. Why is it such a chore to just get insulin? Ugh. Uh, I'm waiting for this print to cool so I can peel it off and we can start another print. I'll have, then I'll have a nice distracting, uh, thing going on there that we can flip to periodically. It's still cooling. I need it to be a little bit cooler than it is right now. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that if I try to move it right now. <coughs> Hold on. The water cooler problem? No. <coughs> Hold on. God fucking damn it. This cough sucks. Um, yeah, so I did not. I, I, we haven't done that yet. Um, I've still got the MEK or whatever. Yeah, I gotta let that cool a little bit more. That's not, see that doesn't move at all. Oop, that moved a little bit, but you never know if you're cracking the glass when you do that. It printed pretty well. That's a, that's a good looking print. Um, yeah, I've got the chemical that I wanna use. Oops, it's the wrong camera. Up, 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 up. Eh, it's just hard to, it's hard to show you guys this print, isn't it? Everything is so big. Um, I got the, I got the um, the chemical that should seal the water cool jacket thing. I haven't had time to play with it yet. That's one thing that I'd like to get to, and we'll have to see if we get to that or not this week. Um, right now, and, and in, the, in the past couple days, I've just been printing. Printing, 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 printing. So let's take a look at some of the prints. Let's uh, open up Fusion, and uh, we'll, we'll do some stuff in that. Fuss. Ah. Fuss. I saw the first message. How you doing? You know, you're right there. Starting up fusion. Ever painful. There it goes. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to, like, put fusion on the top instead of under all the stuff. Like, if I make a scene specifically for fusion, and then I can take up more of the screen. Because it does want more of the screen. Uh, but, I mean... I like to I like to have as much of this up there as possible. Or I could turn this window into a uh into a BTS window. Haven't I done that before? That's not it. Uh No, that's nope, that's not the right. That's not that's not for this situation. That's not okay. Uh what else would it be? No, I don't have it on here. I'd have to I'd have to pull it up. Alright, uh let's see. Fusion 360. So, add cam to the tools at the top. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you still concussed? Yeah, probably. I think the bruise has gone away, but. Okay, so we're doing uh, the computer project, which is in the root directory, computer. I got a bunch of computer projects here, but the one that we're looking at 
is the air cool assembly project. It's the air cooled upgrades. And we'll work on the individual parts. I'm just going to open up the whole assembly just so we can look at it and oogle it for a minute. Because we will need to get measurements from this and pull it to the other parts. I hear some cracking in the background, which means that uh, stuff is happening. It means parts are becoming un unseated, which is good. All right, so update the external references. We'll let it do that. It's going to take a minute. This computer is going to get a graphics card upgrade. This thing will get the old uh, GTX, or sorry, the 1080 FTW. And we'll see about whether or not I want to water cool it, because I want to move this computer, the streaming computer, into the rack over there. 3D prints and bits as the nozzle's messed up. We got a metal mini lathe that needs new gearing, and my CNC router is out of calibration. I have a holiday from work next week. I'll probably still be in the same when I go back to work. Yeah, you know. I didn't get a concussion. Schmeid is being... Kurt, um, no, I did not get a concussion, but I did bonk my head very badly on my, my, own, my own desk the other night. It was bad. So I clearanced this a little bit. There's absolutely no space at all. If this 3D model is correct, which I have my doubts, then we actually do have enough room to put the graphics card in here. The back panel of the graphics card is a custom thing, and I've actually added... Uh, little little individual lettering that get, that'll get pressed into place. Instead of it just being raised text, it's going to be a different plastic. I was thinking about making it uh, into the clear plastic, but that's that it doesn't look right in that location. The clear the clear uh, PETG is it, it just looks like uh, white plastic that's a little bit iridescent. I would rather have it. I'm I'm using the space gray which has a little bit of the look of the, the actual, the, it kind of has a little bit of a glossy look to it. Not really, but it kind of does. It would if it was a larger, you know, solid, or if, if the top layer was a little bit more smooth. But that's okay. I mean, I, I guess I could, I could reprint them on the glass and have the smooth surface down. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, I gotta think about that. Um, because then those would be glossy on the uh, the less glossy, but still a little bit glossy, um, 3D printed top surface. Or I could do that weird pattern that Short Lurker did that looks like ancient car plastic, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think I'm going to do that. So the things that we got to work on are these two little guys right here. These two little things right here. What are these? What the hell? What the hell is this? Well, if you recognize the graphics card, I mean, there's three, there's actually three things we need to work on right here. Um, if you recognize the graphics card, you know that there are two enormous plugs that sit right here. And so what this piece does is this hides the circuit board that I've put them on. I put the two plugs on a circuit board without locking connectors, and then I hide all of that inside of a little block. But that little block, because of the difference between the Radeon and the, uh, the GeForce card, that little block is actually clipping into the bottom here. It's, I, Fusion, you have to, like, when you mouse over stuff in Fusion, it highlights it, right? It just highlights whatever you're mousing over, because it's a CAD program. But this is hard to see. I don't, it's not good to look at. And then I un, unmouse it in order to show you guys what's going on. Hold on, I need to, I need to get my, get my drink. Get my drink. Um, I actually think it would fit in the 1U. Eh. One, you might be pushing it. It might be uh, like right up at the limit, but it, it's not good for rack mounting because there's no air space uh, over top. Like I need that top air in order to keep my computer cool, right? Okay, so um, these clip. These clip into one another and it's using the wrong kind of screws. I'm going to use the countersunk screws for everything because they look cool uh, because the the colors of the plastic are going to be dark and shiny, and these are light and a little bit shiny. They're still a little bit shiny. If they were matte, it would probably be better. If this were matte, it would be better. But I can't get the color depth that I depth that I want uh, out of the shiny translucence. Uh, so I'm I'm going to end up making them very glossy as a result. So, um. Darks and lights contrasting, right? So the grays go together. The the plastic is sort of giving it its look, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I've got kind of a carbon fiber thing going on over here too. Although, um, 
it would be really cool if I had enough carbon fiber and enough ability to create these things out of carbon fiber, and then they would look really cool as well. But I, I, whatever, it's not a carbon fiber computer. It does have a base plate of carbon fiber. But anyway, um, this thing is just a block that's supposed to decoratively hide the, uh, the graphics card power plug. I need to make it short enough that it's going to fit in the case <laughs> without bonking into the lower layer thing there, right? So let's figure out what that distance is between, between these two, and then we'll have to shorten the model up. Now, the problem with that is that the model has mostly been created from the center out. So I need to figure out what I need to do in order to change that. I mean, maybe move all the screws inward a little bit, and then I can do a press pull on the bottom layer. That would probably be the easiest thing for me to do right now. It wouldn't be the best thing for future me, but future me can go suck eggs for all I care. Um, so yeah, oh God, there's just so many parts in this thing. So if I get rid of that, I can then take the inspect tool, go from the bottom of this piece, bring it back in, go to there. What is a distance? Half a millimeter, huh? 0.56. So we need to probably take it up 0.6. There can be a little bit of space between these two. That's okay, because the graphics card is going to get tied down by this block. That block will extend forward a little bit. Hold on. That block's going to extend forward a little bit. Um, there may already be holes in the, in the base plate. Um, I don't have a 3D model of it. If I did, this would be a whole lot easier. I could just find the holes and uh, use them again. That would be nice. Uh, anyway, I could either just dead reckon where they are or base them off of the spacing of the previous part, but um, I need to map out where they are so that I can uh, have this screw into them or make new ones or make new holes in the bottom of the case. This thing's already kind of Swiss cheesed, so... Uh, but anyway, 0.6 on that thing. What the heck is that thing? GPU power hider, there we go. This little guy right here, this little weird mutant part. Didn't really make it all that sensibly. It's kind of a, it's kind of has a lot of features on it that are strange. Um, very weird part. I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm half tempted to just make it again. But I guess I'll hold off on that. I'll hold off on that. I'll try to resist that urge. Because it, it's got just all these weird geometries on it in order to make these little window sections where I'm putting uh, like a mesh. It's a plastic mesh panel on that. And that just kind of breaks up the, uh, you know, the solid piece of plastic. But I mean, if I were in full control... Oh, God, look at that scroll. I would probably be moving these individually upwards and then doing a press pull on them. Let's look at the sketches. There are four sketches. Uh, main body, window, window, window. Okay, main body, main body go. All right, so what do we got here? Oh boy. Well, it looks like I did it from the corners. So if I were to narrow this down, I could take the outer shell if I make the outer shell a little closer, uh, that's going to affect everything. Yeah. So if I move these 0.6 up, I guess that's my best bet, is to move those up by 0.6. Otherwise, I mean, they're, they're already kind of interfering with everything. Yeah, let's go up 0.6. So 3.6, huh? That's going to affect how many other things? That blew out the outer wall. God damn it. Okay, so the outer wall is based on their location being 20.5. But if I take that away, it's going to move up. They'll, they'll, they'll all move, and then the side walls are going to move with them. And that won't, ah, that won't make the right dimension smaller. Oh, my God. How can I just move in those? <sighs> because that window is 1 by 1.5 from the screw hole. Everything was built around the screw holes, weren't they? Oh no. Oh no. This is a little bit more complicated than I had banked on. Um, if I get rid of the screw holes, well then I have nowhere to... I don't have a, a feature to locate the screws from. I need to locate... Because in order to make the new, the countersunk screw holes, 
I will just pull in a part uh, and then I'll do an interference thing on them, the, the overlap thing. So that'll be easy to do once I have a good location for the screw holes. If I don't make the screw holes, maybe that's the way that I do it. Let's maybe, no, but then, uh, how is this gonna work? Okay, uh, I mean, I could just extrude from the screws themselves and then do a press pull in order to get the interference fit for the threads. Uh, thinking about that. All right, uh, let me get this stuff off of the print surface. I think it's ready to go. I think it's ready to go. Give me my stuff back, printer. My stuff that didn't exist before you started making it. Hmm. Not yet. The support stuff is really the hardest stuff to break away, and I don't want to damage anything. There we go. I try to, like, move it horizontally instead of vertically, because otherwise it'll threaten to take up the plastic or the, the glass crystal. <laughs> Crystals of the glass. If I let this fully cool, like right now it's a little bit over ambient. If I let it fully cool, this will just release. It'll just be separate. Nobody has time for that. That's a little bit more aggressive than I wanted to be. Let's see what the surface looks like. Oh my god, it's so glossy. Yeah, I guess I can live with that. That's, that's not bad. That is incredibly glossy though, holy shit. How glossy that is, man. Well, that's gonna be the look of the computer. On the outside, anyway. All right, so the next print Get that started. And that's over on the other computer because I got the slicer set up on the on the non-streaming computer. On the non-streaming one. Hey, I'll bring these over the, to the desk. We can actually see them. Cough drop red, yeah. To celebrate. Everybody has a cough right now. One of the operators that I that I ended up uh, talking to for PayPal was like coughing into the phone. <laughs> Alright, so that should start. Gonna zero. Everything coming together. Sounds like you got COVID. You lost your sense of smell. I just got, I just have a terrible cough. And it's not COVID. You were tested and it wasn't COVID. You lost your sense of smell due to it. Damn. Okay, so that'll that'll start up in a minute. There's not good lighting on my on my printer. That's the next the next thing is for me to get some kind of a get some kind of a uh, a light on there just so that I can see actually see what's going on. But the thing we just printed, how does that look? I mean, you can see some of the pinks in here. Hold on, let me try to. Right, this other light came on, but it's not in a good position right now. There we go. There's a little bit more light. Focus the camera on the thing that you're actually trying to look at. It's like everything is out of focus, isn't it? Here, you guys come a little closer. And then... <clears throat> uh, the, camera, the camera favors reds very, very much. So, you know, got to be careful with it, but... It, it's extremely glossy. Um, but you can see some of the pinks in there, right? That, I mean, that's just support material. So I've got to crack that out of the hole in order to put the screw through that. And then this I've got to separate without totally destroying. Usually it just pops off with PETG, but uh, this is kind of a weak feature. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> that was easy. Neat. Let's see, let's see. This is a very difficult thing to separate. And if it does, I ruined the whole print. Oof. Yeah, there's like two spots. It's the corners, really, where it really sort of adheres. But if you crack it just right, you can crack it like it. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. See, this is the surface that I wanted as the top layer. But if I do that, then I need tons of supports. So I need to just embrace the shininess that comes with this, uh, that comes with the glass bed. How are things getting along in space? I have not seen much space news lately. 
Yeah, this is the other angle of the printer as it goes through and it figures out how level my glass bed really is. Those little bits of dust are probably going to affect the results, but I don't have this doing the visualizer right now. So we won't be able to really see what the results are of this leveling. But presumably the printer will use them in order to create nice prints out of everything. Okay, so we'll let that do its thing for a little while. It still needs to heat up. Um, this thing is crazy. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do here. Previously, what I did with these is I just put the countersunk screw on top of the old screw and then let it do its magic of, uh, of you know, the CAD, CAD magic of removing uh, what should be removed. But in this case, this thing is too, too close to the, the, the level. It's too close to the ground. Um, if I only could just move this down 0.6, I would be super happy. But the way I designed this is madness. It's just complete and utter madness. Absolute chaos. So if I move one thing, I need to be cognizant of all the other gears that move and turn. And uh, presumably this is a standard size. So if I follow the standard size, um, you know, the spacing of the connectors and everything, I can just move this from one computer to the other. But, uh, but I think this graphics card is a little larger, so it sits closer to the ground. No clue, three, two, one, subbing for the second prime in a row. Thank you, I really appreciate that, no clue. I, I, hey, thank you for the sub. Which might have kind of you. Man, two months in a row means that you were not drawn in by the gimmick of this stream, which is typically burn the subs, which is what this camera should be doing, is filming a name going onto the board. Instead, it's over here filming the little bit of filament that I squish out at the beginning of the print. Thank you for the content. I appreciate that. Hey, I'm glad you guys enjoy what I, what I bring to Twitch. It looks like the print has already started. It's crazy. Can I see the extruder gear? No, the, the, the wire is blocking the extruder gear. There we go. Printed on glass. It always kind of shocks me how, how it how the print actually sticks to this glass. Well, for better, uh, for the most part. <laughs> that's, why is that corner? Oh wait, no, it intentionally did that. Okay, so that's actually correct. Yeah, there it goes. On a mission from God. Uh, you can see a little bit of the gear up there by the, by the wires when it gets close. And that's just forcing translucent red filament into a nozzle that's being cooled by that fan. That fan is there so that there's structure leading all the way up to the hot part of the nozzle instead of it just throwing it into a bed of uh, molten plastic. I mean, it eventually does that, but it's closer to the nozzle when it does that. I've wanted to do a water-cooled 3D print for some time, but I've, I've resisted the urge. Thus far. Thus far. Okay, um, how the hell are we going to fix this? I cannot extrude the screw holes, and then I can come up with another way to locate them. Let's try that. Let's try not extruding the, um, the screw holes, and then I can press pull the surface, and then we can just sort of haphazardly place screws down on, on this surface. I'll maybe make a sketch for them, and then, and then we can actually have like a logical location for the screws. And the screw holes, which are probably part of the extrusion, to be honest. Yeah, see, I've got to come in here and I've got to reselect all of this stuff. All the best. Okay, so there. First off. So I'm just going to go through extrusion by extrusion, and anywhere I've excluded screw holes, I need to include them. The only problem is, if I'm going to make another extrusion on top of the other extrusion... I need to make sure that I'm not accidentally telling it to join surfaces that I don't want it to join. So one of the, one of the little tricks of the, the trade that I do here is when I try to combine solids, I will unview the solids that I don't want to combine. And so when you go back through the timeline like I am right now, that will end up breaking stuff. It'll end up joining things that you don't want joined. So we need to be cognizant of that as we move through. This thing was made by a madman in a fit of rage, so I don't know... Um, precisely uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing here. 
Like, uh, I don't, I don't know the steps that put this thing together. So we might, we might screw up the whole model. But that's what Control Z is for. I think I just like got rid of that extrusion. We'll get to you. You patiently wait over there, okay? Extrude six. I don't have any words for you right now. You're on my shit list. So this one's new body, so that's okay. But when I do a combine, I'll need to unview the bottom half. Okay. And we still got, we still have screw hole extrusions on the top. Nope. Go. Just get rid of those. Now this might be completely negating some of the steps here, um, but I'm gonna let the software kind of figure that out. Yeah, see that that whole step just needs to go away, I guess. Yep, everything everything stuck. I know. Which one is this? That one doesn't have any identity. Okay, all right. Yeah, you get you get out of here. You don't even worry about it. I don't know what this one is either. Delete. There. Okay. So there's our solid without screws. So the thing that we need is another 0.6 out of the bottom of this thing. So now I can just do a press pull on these two surfaces, negative 0 0.6. And that didn't negatively affect anything because it's on the right part of the timeline. So if I save and I go back to my main assembly, that's got an update on it. Update. Uh, hello? There we go. Get latest for it wasn't it didn't even propagate to the menu by the time I clicked it. Okay, so now there should be a microscopic like 0.1 millimeter space here between this and the bottom. And of course, I can't highlight it because it highlights the entire plate, and then I don't end up being able to see what's going on. I ain't seeing that 0.1. Can you guys see it? I guess it's there. We're going to have to assume that that's within wiggle room uh, parameters. And the fact that we can see a line on the bottom of the solid means it probably doesn't, it probably doesn't collide. Now I could do an analysis view where I, it, it like cuts everything in half. That's possible. I could possibly do that, but uh, I, think, I think we're good. I think we're okay. So now that we have the clearance, we gotta put the screws back in. Those are kind of a, those are kind of a, a feature of this thing. So I can make a new sketch for it. Or I could use, well, the previous holes are invalid now. Let's just make a new sketch. So create a sketch. And now I can locate these, I guess I'll give them five millimeter circles just so that we know that they, uh, they clear everything. What's up, guys? Um, I guess from the center. I don't know if they necessarily need to be centered, but... I mean, I guess I can do them like offset. I don't know how to do this. I don't know really how to do that. I guess we could do a square from the bottom corner and then square them all up from there. That's kind of how I did it before, but should be somewhere around there. So let's do like four by four. Well, but the circles, yeah, that'll get it. I think that'll get it sort of close to there. Let's see. It's got a five millimeter cap head. We don't need, we don't need a, we can do construction lines for this so that it doesn't interfere with anything. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty centered on there. I, there's not going to be a lot for the screw to grip underneath, but I can always glue this thing together and just have fake screws like the other one. <laughs> so let's go four by four from here. And then just give it a, give it a five. That one's a little bit more tricksy. Uh, I can just give that, locate that based on that. I don't know, that seems a little weird. But we don't, it's not like we have an exact corner here and we'd have to do trigonometry in order to figure out where, where that would actually go, so. That's kind of the annoying part about all those chamfers. All these chamfers. Chamfer. 
Uh, let's see. So to put a five millimeter radius thing in a pretty decent location, I mean, that looks pretty close. Uh, we could do 17. Mm, 18. Pushes it up a little bit. And give that a five. Uh, nope. 17. 17 and a half. It's gotta be. So I'm just dead reckoning where these things go because I can't be asked to get it exactly right. <laughs> just dead reckoning, that's all. As long as it looks like some engineering was behind it. <laughs> just fake it till you make it. Now, I don't know if the points are construction points, if I can reference them uh, in order to locate the, uh, the fasteners that I want to put in. But let's just give it a try, huh? So finish that sketch, and now I've got a sketched out location where I want those sketchy screws to go. Um, I can go into my menu, and I built this part specifically for this thing. Oops, no. Uh, computer... And then there's just like screws, and I've just got one. So bring that into the drawing. Make sure it's in the right orientation. That would be this one, 180 degrees. And then a point to point move from this circle to that circle. Hell yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's one. So in order to make the others, I just copy this part a bunch. Just put it in the right spot. So this distance is the same. So what I'll do is I'll do a move copy and then I will move a uh, component and it'll be this component point to point. And you got to click this early on or else it doesn't let you do it. Create copy. Oops. So now it doesn't know that I want. Okay. Or origin point is there. That's where it's going. Click. Okay. Bada bing. Now I got two screws. Now there's a lot of Z fighting going on so much so that I should do an episode recap. However, um, That'll be resolved once we do the cutout. And I get, mm, when I do the cutout, I think the centers are gonna, they're gonna become their own bodies and I'll just have to ignore them or, or unview them. That's annoying. I had to put the cap head in there. I had to put the, uh, the screw element in there. All right, so move and then we're gonna do a point to point on a component. That's weird, create copy. So create a copy didn't come up until I clicked on the component and then it came up and then you have to click it early or else it goes away. That's so weird. Oh yeah, and the components actually I want both of these and we can just move them and copy them from here, bada bing, to here, bada bing. Click okay. I didn't, ah, why didn't you copy that one? <coughs> move this one, create copy. Point to point, point, point. Okay. All right, there we go. So there's our there's our fasteners in the new in the new uh, connector hiding apparatus, and they are they are not doing any functional job. I may just glue it together. I may just glue it together because these screws are going to be purely decorative. Oh well, <laughs> they're purely decorative. They're not long enough to actually have any meaningful fastening going on here the seam of this thing is all the way down here yeah they're just decorative screws all right uh okay fine more decorative screws in my design just what i needed this thing was held together by screws but uh the 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 laptop button head or no pan head the pan heads which i do like i still i still have a love affair with pan head screws for some reason um those actually have different lengths, whereas these are the ones that came with Maker Beam that I've got too many of. Uh, this will help me have one type of fastener to take apart my entire computer. Uh, however, I may have to glue this in order to get that thing to hold. I could put a screw in for the other side. <laughs> oh, that's rich. I might do that. Just put in a screw from the other side to actually hold it together. Yeah. <laughs> It would work. <laughs> well, anyway, the command that I'm looking for is... I don't have a capture position command right now. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, this guy. The little combine tool. The combine. So, 
target body is this guy right here. I mean, it would be both of those, but unfortunately. Uh, keep tools. And then my tools is you, 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 and you. And we are not joining them. We're cutting. Nope. That one. And unfortunately, we're left with these little floating hexagons that we'll have to get rid of. See, that's going to blow out the bodies. I'm just going to do that. I'll just unview them. All right, so that's that. And now there's enough clearance that those screws are just going to fall into a hole. So what I need to do is unview the screws. Because I gave, I gave the screws a thread part, but the thread part is huge. So I just need to get rid of that thread part. I need to, I need to narrow the thread part so that these will actually press fit uh, in. Which is probably going to be a bunch of individual press pulls, isn't it? Oh, I hate that there's little breaks in it. Just because of the way this, the, the clearancing on this whole solid is. It's just a mess. Press pull that. And we're going to go... Na or no, we're going to go 0 0.1. That 0 0.1 might not seem like a lot, but it actually does a lot. And there's an error. Okay. All right. Cancel it then. Fine. I'll glue them in place if I need to. So many lies in this design. This design is full of lies. It's full of lies. Well, you can at least make the screw holes go through the entire thing. I'm not allowed to alter that one anymore. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's going to be a little weird. Yeah, that is, in fact, it is a little weird. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't exactly work. Uh, and I don't have, I don't have like a solid here that I can, that I can locate. Can I, can I choose like extrude and then choose like the, no, it only does a solid plate. So what, what, the sketch doesn't have it. I, we could add it to this sketch, I guess. And do uh three millimeter. Well, it would be th uh 2.8. Just add those solids to everything. Actually, this is how we can delete the hexes in the middle, too. <laughs> yeah, we're doing so many stupid things, but uh, whatever. Maybe one day I'll come back and redesign it. Finish, and then I'm gonna, oh, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna view all this stuff again. But now, I'll extrude from these four holes, and that'll just clean up all the garbage. Cut it all, cut it all away. Ah, oh, it didn't get, did it not get rid of them? And there's nothing there. You're no longer there, you're not, uh, I'll just unview them. They're not technically in the drawing anymore. <laughs> I guess if you extrude through an entire body, it doesn't necessarily delete the body. At least now I have some functional screw holes, though, and maybe I can come in from the other side and just put some screws through there that will hold this thing together. And if they're the pan heads, um, they won't be too visible when this thing is pl you know, all plugged up together. Um, plugged up together sounds a little weird. Uh, but anyway, that'll now clearance, and it'll also accept the countersunk screws that are sort of the, the, the defining uh, look of the rest of this build. Now, the computer, the, the other power supply plug, the one that actually supplies the, um, the motherboard with power, I need to see how that's clearancing. Um, here, let's save this, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, because I don't think I'm going to bother with this one yet. Uh, I'll come back to it. So if there's any other, like, visual ridiculousness that we need to address, I can... I can address it when we come back and we work on this. Components are out of date. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's update that. Uh get latest version. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, there we go. So now that we have the latest version, we have the countersunk version of this thing. Oh yeah, wait a minute. We need to view the screws again. 
what's the point of having an extensive 3D model if you can't be a little bit vain with it? Now, one thing I didn't do was populate the meshes of these things because it's a uh, it's kind of difficult to make meshes uh, in Fusion. There, I have a plugin that does it. It's an infill tool, and I could maybe make make some kind of a mesh with it. But then you got to get it to the right size, and there's just yada yada yada. It's just all these steps that you got to do in order to do like these basic view things. Uh, I mean, I maybe could extrude like a solid in those locations and then give it a texture, but uh, I, I don't want to bother. I didn't want to make this model in the first place. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Uh, all right, so boop. And then we can update our drawing. Get latest version. There we go. Beautiful. Starting to look like a bit of a unified thing going on here. I st these were created. These weren't extruded with the solid. When we get to this, I'll, I'll refresh those. These holes were just like drunkenly located. I don't, I don't know. And not drunkenly on my part for once. This is just something on the front of the card. And I guess it probably... It probably actually corresponds to like a, a standardization or something, but it, boy, it, these holes are just there. And they're there, I mean, it's nice that there are screw holes in the front of the graphics card so that you can make a post in order to hold it up in your computer if you've got a traditionally laid out computer. I use an extender cable. Every time I mention it, my friend links me to a chart of extender cables and how only a couple of them are good. I use a 3M extension cable. It is not any of these no-name brand PCIe riser cables. It is a professional uh, engineering kind of thing. I don't know if it's going to be, it's probably still going to be a bottleneck for the system because it's not exactly PCIe 4. Uh, I'll have to wait until DigiKey or somebody else has like a super professional, super well made riser cable and flip to that. Maybe, maybe 3M will be, you know, grace us with a better riser cable. I don't know. <laughs> it's 3D. You always have to spend time to see the screws. I know they're an important part of the design. They actually, they actually lend a lot to the look, and I'm, I'm excited to see this in IRL. And that's hopefully going to be Thursday, because I got a lot of 3D printing to get us from here to there. So Thursday, I'm hoping. See, when I did these screw holes, I did the lazy thing, and I just put them on top of the pan head screws, and so it's actually kind of a mess underneath that. There's like a, it's like a ridge. Um, I hope it'll work out. <laughs> I think it will, but, but it's kind of a mess. All right, so this one, I could just throw the screws up on there and place them on top. And I guess that's probably what I'll end up doing. I didn't make this like a, like a thing. See, what this block is, this block is kind of important to the function of the computer. With the Vicor power supplies that I'm using, just pretend there's a circuit board there, right? There's supposedly a circuit board there, and on that circuit board, there are three modules. And those three modules are what turn 120 volts AC into 300 volts DC, and then turn that 300 volts DC into 12 volts DC. And then the 12 volts I feed directly to the graphics card, and then directly to a little circuit board that plugs in to the power supply unit right there. So what that little circuit board is, is a very efficient buck converter. And that very efficient buck converter creates all those different weird voltages that the motherboard needs. See, they're talking about, in computers, they're talking about everybody just going to 12 volts. Well, I did that. Um, in order to do that, pretty much the only thing that needs the variety of different voltages these days is your motherboard. Because you plug your hard drives directly into the motherboard. You plug fans directly into the motherboard. Well, the fans take 12 volts too. But so all you need is 12 volts in a computer. Once you get the power supply module, power supply module is designed to go in a, in a car. It's a, like a car PC adapter, so it can take up to 14 volts, uh, but it basically turns 12 volts into 140 watts of motherboard voltage. And we did the calculations, we're not going to need 140 watts. So, I mean, we'll, we'll get up there. We're going to get up there, but it, that power supply is capable of powering the entire MOBO with, with the 5950X on it. Um, Unfortunately, though, all of that power, power creation requires a little bit of stabilization on, on the part of the, the power supply modules. And so in order to achieve that, you need to have these big fuck-off capacitors attached to your design. I didn't want to have the big fuck-off capacitors over by the power supply, so I put them remote. And in order to keep them safe, because there's 300 volts DC kicking around on that circuit board, I potted them in silicon rubber and that silicon rubber has this pink hue to it 
Uh, it's it's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> it's gross because it's silicon rubber. It takes up dust very easily. So what I did is I created a little a little ham radio box or whatever, a little a little radiator cover, you know, grandma's radiator cover uh, that has all the doilies on it and stuff. And and for some reason, candies that are made out of glass, like why why do you have that? Um, but yeah, that's that's what I create. I create a little block around it so that I wouldn't well, uh, literally fucking electrocute myself. And so now, in order to keep dust off of it and to make it look like part of this computer, I, I am putting uh, a cover on it. Now, if I was super duper clever, and I'm not, um, I wonder if I could use this space under here. Hold on. This space under here to put like a bunch of smaller capacitors in parallel in order to become that big capacitor and just hide it under the. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. Nah, it's too much design. Too much stuff to design. So. Anyway, big, big capacitor block. So that's what that is, the big remote capacitor block. It's not exactly located where I have it on the model. That's just kind of a convenient spot. I know there's room for the cable to go under, so I think it's a little bit further over to the right, but it's just this big open area in this case. And I think with the red redesign, with everything printed in red, we should use those little display modules that we dug up the other day. Um, the other day being like, <laughs> like four months ago. We dug up these little display modules that are that are the same sort of bright red. And what I can do is I can hook that up to an analog uh, line on the power supply that will then make it uh, a current monitor. So we could put a, like a, like a, maybe not a teensy. I don't think a teensy, no, not a teensy. Uh, a, uh, I don't think an AT Tiny 85 is enough pins to run that unless I do a port expander on an AT Tiny 85. That'd be weird. So uh, typically when I build a system to embed these days, I'm putting an AT Tiny 85 in it because it's just a very minimalistic thing. Maybe we can make that work because I do have port expanders. Yeah, maybe we'll have to do that. AT Tiny 85 has plenty of computing ability to be a one analog level reader. It's just the display output would have to be put to the, uh, the port expander. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. And then we'd have we'd have this little seven segment display that I could put in this area. <laughs> That's for a later date though. I think right now, all I need to do is just place those screws on top of here. And I have versions of these countersunk screws that have like no threads sticking out of them. So I'll be able to put them hopefully right here without, without any interference. That's what I had to do with the, the other screws too. This thing is just glued together. I just used ultraviolet glue in order to glue it together. So I'll have to pop the old one apart because it's bright orange, and then we'll, we'll make it red. Why does it want me to capture a position? I don't capture the position. What just moved? Did anything move? What did you do? What is it you say you do here? I really hope these fit. Should fit. Wait, what happened to this? Sometimes you click on stuff and it'll move it around. Like, I don't like what I'm seeing right here. I think I must have clicked on something and it moved. Well, oh, that might be okay. All right, uh, save that. Go into here. We're done with this for now. That's mostly cosmetic unless I find screws for it. And then I can go. I can't really control Z because uh, I've been inc like putting stuff in. Uh, maybe I can. Anyway, uh, back to the parts for the air cooled upgrades. And then I am looking at this thing, this weird radiator. And I'm just going to plop the screws down. I'm just going to plop the screws down and let them extrude themselves. It's gonna look like ass, but it'll be fine when I print it and put the actual screws in. I don't wanna search it. Uh, you go this, no wait, I need you back. I'm sorry I yelled. Uh, go back to the computer, go to screws, drop that some bitch in here. Look at him, look at him go. He's in his lane. He's thriving. He's in his element. All right, uh, so this goes here. Bada bing. And then I do this again. Do the song and dance again. I've been doing this with all the parts. Move that guy. Create the copy. Go from point to point. Point to point. 
I because I haven't been undoing the old extrusion, so there's like all this weird baggage in there. That's alright though. Uh point the point. Oh wait, hold on. You need to select both of them. And then we go point. Oh, make sure to create a copy too. The point. The point. The point. There we go. And then a little bit of this guy, a little bit of that guy, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this and that, a little bit of the other thing. Bada bing. Now what does it look like without these things in there? Oh dear God. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah. I might, I might end up having to just glue cap heads. I might have to file down the, uh, the countersunk screws and just glue them in. All for the look. It's all for the look. I don't light it. Uh, bodies. Yeah, we created a bunch of bodies. Oh no, what have I done? What the? There you go. Oh, it like, number two is this. The original is that? Ah, oh, God. Cap. Underscore. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna actually spell brick top. There. <laughs> Could call it cap frame top, I guess, but that just gives it the illusion of actually being fastened together with screws. I'm not about to put like, what is it? 8, 12, 20 screws into this thing. I guess I have the screws. I could put 20 screws into the thing, but I think that would be a little absurd. So I, I don't know. I just split it down here. It probably should be split like a little further up to be honest. But uh, when it does print, I have to break off a lot of support structure and uh, it can tend to snap off the legs by accident. There's a huge airplane going by, and so the whole basement is rumbling right now. Like an enormous jet. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna go get my uh my green tea. Got diet green tea. This thing is happily printing away the front facade. I'm printing all the facades right now, so they're gonna look extremely shiny. <laughs> Chat is essentially as asleep as I feel. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we're going to work a little bit on programming an Arduino. What are we going to be programming this Arduino with? Well, we're not doing the current monitor thing yet. I'm excited to do that, but print fake screw heads and spray them with some metallic paint. No, why would I do that? No way. Um, I do have a metallic gray. It's, uh, it's called Space Gray. That would work really well, but uh, no, 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 no. I have actual screw heads. And, and by the way, the screw heads are all um, stainless steel. So they've got a particular look up against everything else. Uh, and I was hoping that I would have that top layer uh, look to the outside stuff, but breaking off the support material has become too much of a chore. It's, it's very difficult to do with PETG. Now I could do it, uh, but I'd have to sand underneath and everything. So instead, I'm printing things on bare glass. Actually, yeah, let's keep it nice and close. Let's get close up. How's everybody doing? I'm in your personal space. Look at me. I'm going to breathe heavily. So I've printed it on the glass bed directly. It still has a bit of that pink sheen to it, though. It's just the way this filament works. But now I've got the squiggly line, and it's perfectly reflective. Now, I... I I think I need to lower my height just a little bit. If I were to get, if I were to lower my height just a little bit, I think maybe those lines would squish into one another. I think my first layer is a little bit too, uh, a little bit too far away. That's generally how PETG works, but I guess I could tell it to extrude more too, but look at that. It just snaps right off. See, the support material works. It works. I could just, just like pop it off. Mostly. 
there's a couple little boogers where it kind of adheres, and then I guess I didn't fully get that one off. That one, that one's going to require a little bit of picking. But yeah, this one, this one worked perfectly. It came right off. But I wanted this to be the top layer aesthetic. You see that, that deep red, the deep red back and forth squiggly stuff? But it's got to be reflective. Just how it is. All right, these need to go somewhere. I need to put them somewhere that they're out of the way. I don't know, put them there for now. <laughs> Remember to check that the spool's the right way. I think I would have known by now. <laughs> I can't believe that would take out your printer. Just having the spool facing the wrong direction. Oh my God, my glucose level. I had a salami sandwich. Glucose level's nuts, rest in peace. My, my survival insulin. No wonder I'm sucking down liquids and, uh, feeling like I gotta pee. Your, your kidney's going to hyperdrive when, uh, when you're hyperglycemic. You gotta flush them. There's almost no pull power in extruders. What are you talking about? There's tons. This one, this one's enough to, like, take out the, uh, I mean, what, it, it'll grind the plastic down if it's unable to feed, but man, it creates a ton of tension. This one, this one is geared, though. Hold on one sec. This one is geared, though, so there's, there's, it, it has a bit of a mechanical advantage. Yeah, look at it go. If only I had a light. <laughs> you could actually see it doing stuff. Just getting, I'm getting the support material off of the other ones here. And then we get to go back to the Arduino. Because we've altered all the parts that I've wanted to alter. Now it's just a matter of printing everything. For time immemorium, I am just printing, printing, printing. Hopefully not ruining this glass surface by printing directly on it. Get back to the code mines. Chat demands that you have code working so that we can play My Summer Car until we die in My Summer Car. Okay, uh, let us, let us save. Let us save, and then I'll, uh, we'll jump into the Arduino again. I mean, I've already got all the windows open. So there's one signal that we're getting back that we got yesterday, that was our last stream, uh, yesterday's last stream, according to me. I'm just blanking my memory out of the past week because since I stopped streaming and now, I have been on the phone with my doctor's office four to five. To, I've been on the phone with my doctor's office more than I have for many, many years. Um, usually things are pretty brainless around there. Uh, they must have hired somebody who's brain, who's also brainless. And so I had to become a brainlet in order to make it all work out. And so I've gotten it worked out. I'm stressed. I didn't sleep. I've been uh, like just mad, 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 mad. It takes a lot out of me. Uh, I hate having to do this because my life is on the line. It's very fun. Um, hey, Cannibal Jesus, 26 gift sub to TurboNad. Thank you. Now that doesn't benefit TurboNad in any way at all whatsoever, except that he gets my emotes. Uh, he gets my, uh, you get my thanks. Uh, but I could also say you guys should all check out TurboNad's stream. He streams pretty much exactly the hours when I'm not available to watch, uh, which is fine. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's good to see. He doesn't got to watch ads. Yeah, that too. That That's actually a big advantage. I it used to be partners didn't have to watch ads. I would like that. That would have been nice. But uh, no, I got to watch ads just like the rest of y'all when I enter a stream. It sucks. <laughs> I hate, but the, what I hate more is mid-roll ads, right? I don't, if I'm clicking on a stream, I'm okay delaying that a little bit for an ad. Like that. that is the limit of my tolerance. Uh, it's when you get it like mid-stream or the streamer does his his cheeky little joke of, of putting up like seven ads and then they all sit there while you're watching an ad and they all go, hee hee hee, those stupid pores can't. It's like, come on, man. They're, yeah, they're so dis, because it's like, you're watching the streamer, right? And you're kind of like, you you get into a vibe and, and it's cool, like you're working on stuff, you're concentrating, maybe on something else entirely. You know, I, I have a feeling that my voice goes out to a lot of y'all and you just aren't listening, which is great. I don't mind that. Um, and that's okay. It's okay. But then an ad drops in and it goes like, Hey, 
we know that you've been working hard during these trying times. And you're like, nah. <laughs> it's like, it's like a record scratch. I never know when they're playing on mine. I think I have them disrupted, but I, I don't have like an indicator. Uh, if you guys, do you guys get like mid-roll ads, you non-subs? Of course I'm not listening. I'm working on my own project. Exactly. <laughs> and I want you to work on your own project so that you can give us updates in my Discord. I need pictures of Spider-Man in my Discord. I mean, pictures of your projects in my Discord because I'm interested in keeping up with them. You guys do a lot of really cool stuff out there and there's a lot of variety to what you guys work on versus what I work on here. And this, this channel, this channel survives on its variety. I need pictures of Spider-Man. <sighs> anyway, if, if you guys are getting mid-roll ads and it's disruptive and there's something I can do about it, I will do something about it. We're looking at a lot of packets here at the beginning of this. Um, our job right now is to make sure that our device can come up to speed with the Granite Devices controller. So the Granite Devices controller, if you guys don't know, what are you doing here? Um, <laughs> we need to do more noob-friendly projects. We might... When I'm done with this thing, we might have to do a couple Arduino days. Just the, the, the absolute basics so that we can get, we can get people back, right? We want to get people back because this is, this is going so far into the weeds. The, the people who are left are sort of a self-selecting crowd. They're the ones that don't mind being completely confused about what's going on. We've gotten so deep into this project that, and it's been a necessity, but we've gotten so deep into this project that the complexity is outshining um, the actual, it's just, it's just outpaced everybody. I can't expect anybody to be up to speed with this. I'm gonna burp, one sec. It's nice to mute for something other than coughing. Um, all right, so, what the hell's going on here? I've got this big industrial motor and it's hooked up to a steering wheel. Well, what we've been doing is using the Granite Devices SimuCube. And the Granite Devices SimuCube comes off of the Open Wheel Project. The Open Wheel Project was, hey, uh, there's a lot of three-phase industrial motors out there, and that's basically just a direct-drive steering wheel. Why can't we make our own? And so they did, and then Granite Devices went, hmm, that's neat and useful. A lot of people are buying our universal Swiss Army Knife-style motor controller, and they're hooking it up to an STM32, and they're making their own sim pits with our stuff. That's really cool. They made, then, an entire motherboard that doesn't need that ancient STM32 dev kit, it's just everything wrapped into one board. Hey, cool. Well, while they were designing it, they decided to non-open source it. <sighs> and so here we are with the non-open source version of the thing. We have no way of knowing what the code is inside of this chip unless we went into some pretty serious reverse engineering efforts. There is no published API for it, so we cannot digitally communicate with that chip in order to tell it that we're pressing buttons. And there are only so many inputs to the chip. Problem is, one of, the, one of the primary characteristics of the steering wheel that I bought is that it has a shitload of buttons on it. That's exactly, exactly why best PC build since The Verge. It is, it is, you are correct, it is a PC that is being built. Definitely, of all the PCs being built, this is one. Uh, anyway, um, this wheel characteristically has a shitload of buttons on it. It's from Mercedes which is essentially a, an appliance with wheels. So we have a ton of buttons to control various stuff around the car, including, crucially, shifting with paddles. Now, I, we've added this shifter over here. One thing about this shifter over here is that it's gated. I couldn't deal with the sequential shifter, so we put a, we've, we've put a gated shifter there. We're going for a drive. Yeah, we're going to go for a long drive. If you catch my drift, that's literally the title of the game that I want to play. Hold on. That wasn't even, like, a cough. Like, that didn't even do any... Ugh. I just got that, like, that bodily urge where your, your body is like, yo, I need you to cough right now. And you're like, why? When you cough and it doesn't do anything. And it's like, yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. Um, so I've got a lot of buttons here, and I don't have enough buttons on the controller to hit just straight out of the bat. Straight off of the bat. Um, so what I did is I bought the wireless wheel module, and then I subsequently killed the wireless wheel module by accident. But we've been trying to emulate that wireless wheel module from our controller right here. So I need to add a couple pins to this thing. One of them is a diagnostic pin, but then uh, among those, I need to, uh, Amogus, I need to also add 
a TX and an RX that we can then plug into where the controller plugs in. Right now we're using this controller here and it's plugged into TX and RX and we have it running on its own on its own stuff. And what it's doing is it's trying to do the boot up sequence of this module. Granite Devices has this BGM 111 chip right here and they have it uh, basically come up to speed with everything else and then register devices on the network. We got that to happen, only we've, we've got some of the response coming in here that we don't understand. So we're able to do funny sex number device and we're able to do this device um, as it, we're able to fool it into thinking that this dead device is actually connecting. We got that far. We've been able to see it in the, in the actual devices readout of the Granite device controller. So it's actually been able to see all of those pin, all of, all of the, it's able to get the MAC address that we give it, right? So we need to take it a little bit further. It's close to being able to push buttons. So what are we responding to the command that we're stuck at? There is, uh, w w what is basically happening is we get up to, hold on, we need to, I need to like r remove some of this stuff. Let me get rid of all the, um, we have our own like special timer, but we have, we've had to do a lot of stuff to this, right? Impressed that that worked. We're not done yet. We haven't quite gotten there. We got it to register. We haven't gotten it to be able to push buttons yet because the, the, the base station needs to assign an ID <coughs> to the device. So <coughs> there it is. Hold on. I'm trying to like cough it all out so that I don't have to cough. It's like running a pre roll ad, but um, I get really lightheaded from coughing though. That's, that's, Kind of impressive, actually. It's like, it's like when you used to make uh, the kids spin around instead of doing drugs. Hey, kids, don't do drugs when you can just spin in place until you're dizzy. <laughs> no, I'm not allowed to die on stream. That's actually against TOS regulations. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't get COVID? You know, I I don't know. Um, I didn't do a test. But I don't think it was COVID because it was just a cough. It was just a cough. I didn't have fatigue. Or maybe I had fatigue and I just didn't realize it. People got points to burn, huh? Lots of points to burn. Might have to cut the mods off from the device. Because <laughs> he can just, he can redeem his own points. Are we doing a fart lanch? What's gotten into you guys? Yeah, we're doing a fart lanch. Oh my god. Why? What happened? What did I what didn't I catch? What's going on? What is this? What is this? <laughs> You're ruining me. I'm ruined. I'm buried in farts. Streamer dies live on stream and it's just a bunch of fart noises. All right, so our device one and two is the packet that we're sending in order to tell it that we're hooked up. Um, let me, um, why? Why do you guys want me to spray stuff? Like, that's so stupid. No, that's the worst idea. Like, I've already, I've already had it out with you guys about this. Streamer, you should drop yourself into a vat of battery acid. That would be cool. Streamer, it'd be really cool if you made like a fart smell spray and it was like brown. And it like actually smelled like farts, and then you showed your feet on stream. Show show the fart spray on your feet, streamer. Mm -mm. You guys are no, your ideas are bad, and you should feel bad. Uh, all right, so where are we with this? Well, we can run it. We can run it, and since we've got very verbose printouts. Uh, this will tell us where it is in the sequence of booting. There are certain commands that we receive that don't have a reply. And if I was smart, and I'm not, if I was smart, I would have a state in my state machine that is just a blank reply. And then I'd have a series of command IDs that were in an array, and that would take up a whole lot less space in my program. This, this thing is huge. Uh, it, basically, what we're doing is we're listening for 
a bunch of different packets. See, these are the ones that we can reply to that we don't care about. We've got just a ton of packets here. And these are the ones that we, when we receive it, we, we just reply back, eh, whatever, I got, your, I got your command. Because we don't care. We don't, we don't care about these settings. We're not a wireless module. So. Where's the channel points redemption for turning on sprinklers for the entire room? Yeah, there's one that's actually uh, co connected to a gun and it just shoots me. Not in the head, because that would be too definitive and complete. It shoots me in the stomach, and then I spend the rest of stream cradling my stomach as I bleed out slowly. Uh, it's pretty much like the most gentle thing that chat wants to do to me. Uh, you should have seen it, Distant Cacophony. A lot of you guys, actually, only like two or three of you guys were here for the original Rabaz raid when, um, when I had uh, the tank. And uh, Twitch, used to have, Twitch used to have separate chat rooms. Um, which was cool for us. I was the only person. I was the only person who used those separate chat rooms properly. They were like, "We can allow your mods to talk together." And then Discord came out, and everybody was just like, "All right, let's just go to Discord for everything." Um, but we used to have the separate IRC chat rooms that you could do like a pull down for um, in the uh, in the Twitch chat, right? And so what we use those for was for live bots on the stream and so i had a little i had a little remote control tank it was a cute little thing it had actual like rubber treads it got no grip at all on the desk so it would just like it would just scoot around and like drift um Rabaz raid right right when we got that thing working Rabaz raided with like 1500 people right it's a lot of people for a stream like this where we're just hanging out and talking i would love to have that many people in chat <laughs> don't get me wrong I will sell out and I will shill McDonald's and I will get a lot of people in my chat. I guess just a lot of people aren't entertained by this kind of stuff. But anyway, we had 1,500 people come in and so you've got you to keep them somehow, right? You got to keep them watching. Um, so what I did, I took the X-Acto knife and I just taped it to the top of the tank. So the tank had an X-Acto knife, right? And people could jump into uh, the other... Yeah, there's, there's, the, there's the clip of it if you're curious. Um, people could jump into that other chat and give it commands. And they were bloodthirsty. OctoJ was in there trying to like save me for some reason. It's not like, it's not like I didn't know what I was doing, right? Um, give you a little view behind the curtain. You know, you give, you give it a knife. Uh, that's not the complete story. The tank really wants to go very, very fast, but it has absolutely no grip on the mat. Uh, and that worked to my advantage in that case. So it looked like a very dangerous, harrowing thing. You've given this automated control thing like a knife. You've, you've literally armed it. But the thing is, it didn't have enough inertia to do anything serious at all. An X-Acto knife will, an X-Acto knife will mess up your entire week. It does not care about you. But um, you need to have some force behind that. It may be an, extre ex an exceedingly sharp knife. That knife still needs at least just a modicum of force in order to do anything. Now, uh, getting a full steam, it was able to penetrate that roll of tape a little bit and look very dramatic, but at one point, I, it did actually bot me in the knuckle, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> so, it was, a, it was a little bit of a, like a parlor trick. Um, there was some danger there, but it was still pretty much just a, a very dramatic looking uh, way to, to sort of keep the people paying attention, right? It kind of ramped up the tension a lot. Miguel Oz! Hey, thank you for the 26 months. I once knelt on an X-Acto knife and it stuck straight up in my foot. Well, cool story, but I, the squeamish in chat probably don't appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it bought me in the knuckle. It didn't even draw any blood. It didn't do anything. It was just a little, a little tap. So that's the secret behind it. But that's one thing that I've done in the past in order to keep people uh, engaged. You have no idea. And here, here I am taking it back full circle how bloodthirsty chat is. If they could dump sulfuric acid on me and render me into it a skeleton, they would do that. They would just do that. They would do that as soon as they had the ability. They don't care. They don't give a shit. All right, so currently what we're doing is we're taking packets into the input buffer. We then read their IDs. We don't even compare them to these. All this stuff is kind of useless. Um, I could put together an array of commands, the 031A, OC00, and I could just have it check through that array and then reply. That would be a way to make my code a little bit more compact 
but since we've already got it there, I'm just going to leave it alone. So, art installation with goldfish and live blenders. Holy shit. Yeah, the veil of anonymity, I think, uh, effect. Because if you put if you put goldfish in a blender, actually plugged in, chat controlled, they would do that in one second. That fish would be dead because there's that there's that veil of anonymity that just. And, and then you know, obviously, the death of the goldfish is not on that chat member. It's on you for putting a fucking goldfish in a, into a blender live on stream. That's s severely stupid, and you should get banned for it. <laughs> Even though goldfish are feeder fish, but still, you just don't do that. Just don't do that, Miguel Oz. Thank you for subbing for one month at, at, at Tier 1. I really appreciate that. Uh, Miguel Oz putting that goldfish in a blender is a bad idea. Oh, did that sound like they did that? Did I did I accidentally phrase that? Pro Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for subbing. <laughs> a blender with a fish stick. That's probably better, but yeah. Yeah, chat is not allowed to do the trolley problem. They're just not allowed. They're not allowed to do it. Um, all right. So let's let's boot this thing up. Let's boot up our serial monitor. That isn't working because everything's turned off. Okay. Uh, plug this thing in. Plug in the Arduino. I'm a little tired, so coding is going to be kind of difficult today. What's the status over here? It looks like the print is done. It's cooling off. So I'll need to I'll need to spool up another print. I am I am nine hundred percent. 3D printer man right now. So that's been my mode for the past couple days. Yeah, just finished. So we gotta wait for it to cool off a little a little longer. Deepest bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. Alright, serial started. So we boot up the device. Beep beep. We get a bunch of serial exchanges going on here. Beep bop, beep, boop, bop, 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 beepity bop. And then we get Legap Connect. I don't know why we're ending on Legap Connect. Because we get this command, and then I think it just gives up. See, it stopped our timer, and then we don't respond to this command, and then it gives up. So we need to figure out how we respond to that specific command. Uh, the, the reason we use a state machine is so that I can specifically print out the packets that we don't recognize in, in the bus. So... And then we'll need to we'll need to build a timer for the battery updates and the, the other thing. We've got five timers that we can draw upon, so we'll just uh, we'll just add a timer to like timer three or four. One sec. It gives up. Yeah, it doesn't respond, and then it unsets the timer, so nothing is happening on the exchange right now. There's no exchange at all. Here, I can turn this off. I can turn this off because there's no communication. So 28.3, eight is the length of the packet. It's 3.1a that we are hearing right now. We get 3.1a. So I'm building up how to respond to 3.1a and I've put that into the notepad plus plus document. Spent a little bit of time looking at that thing to see what it says. Basically, we are referencing the API, and all these files, if you guys are interested, are available in the Discord. They're in my stream project section. Bop, 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 bop. So deepest, bluest, this thing is called Blue Gecko, so I'm constantly doing that. Um, so the Blue Gecko module receives a packet, and that would be event lay connection uh, pr blah, 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 parameters. So, Lake, everything is lay. It's uh, L-E, low energy, but uh, all the commands have lay in the middle of it, so we can be like lay redditors and, and just talk about stuff like that and be really cringy while we, while we do this. So event let connection parameters, and that is a 20 command, and it is an 03, and it is a 1A. So I figured out what all the stuff is that it's doing. So it is doing the connection handle is 1. That's what the blah, 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 blah. Zero, one, two, three, four. That's this one right here. So connection handle is number one. Okay. I found LE underscore in production code the other day and I almost threw up. Le connection. Hon, 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 hon. Okay, anyway, uh, connection handle's one. We've got a connection interval. We don't really care about. We don't care about that. I don't, hey, connection interval. I don't 
care. What is 030A times 1.25? Uh, hex to decimal. Hex to decimal. Zero, three, one, a convert. 794. 794 times. Why are we doing this? Times 1.25. 990. So it's a one second interval be a one second interval oh it's a zero ah uh, whatever it's a it's a a one or a zero whatever just use a calculator no <laughs> anyway um connection intervals one second how many connection intervals can it skip i don't know like a like a hundred and some it's like a lot it's like a lot that it can skip i guess i don't know supervision timeout eh, whatever who cares it's one it's 10 milliseconds it doesn't matter what security mode are we zero and then the maximum data channel pdu is 220 all right so that's what we get it's a bunch of stuff we don't care about this is all pertaining to how the bluetooth low energy device uh connects to this specific thing but we're what we're doing is we're registering our device so we need to fool this thing into thinking that all the commands that it's given us are totally fine and great and wonderful so look back over here our response that we're currently giving it does not contain this information. So our response is the generic okay. We need to alter it to look like this specific response. So we have uh, a response to payload length and the address and the ID, and then we have a result code. After which a handle that will be assigned to the connection after connections established. Oh man, am I gonna be burping this whole stream? I had like a a, a day old salami and uh, I think it was like sun dried tomato sandwich on on um, baguette, but like baguette the day after is not. It was like I was like fighting the bread. I didn't even get to taste the salami. <laughs> mm -hmm. Our response profile is basically K. Yeah, it is. That's really not that fancy. It's it's not. I don't know why you have to shame me for eating real food. Uh, let's see here. We need to respond with basically everything is totally fine, and then we give it a handle. And so we can give this the handle 01. I mean, in accordance to what we see with the... Let's see. When we first see the device, we want to make it 1. So... When we respond with our, I mean, it's going to assign a timer, but when we actually like push a button, the packet looks like, the packet looks like nine four. Let's see what nine four is. I'm just trying to figure out if, if this connection has been given a handle and, and we can, uh, we can then use the same handle. Uh, so we're looking for 0904. So let's look up 09. There's 93, 94. It's like right there. Uh, but we're looking at an A0, though. Discover all characteristics of a GATT service in a remote GAT device, having specified. This command generates a unique GAT characteristic event for every discovered characteristic having specified. UU oh, Jesus Christ, speak English. Gap procedure completed indicates that the gap procedure was successfully completed or failed with an error. Service handle. We might have to deal with this in a minute. Uh, the, the base station might end up trying to do that. But we're looking for the A0 response. So we're 0904 still. Nine eleven, nine D, nine five, nine zero. 99A. Where's the? There it is. 0A94. Ah, here we go. Event GAT characteristic value. Message ID. Connection handles is the fourth entry again. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1. Well, well, well. What have we here? 
I can't believe that they're just using these directly out of the data sheet. Everything this module does is just directly out of the... Hold on, I can cough. And everything this module does is just directly out of the data sheet. Get characteristic handle. This value is normally received from the get characteristic event. Ah, so we are going to have to deal with that in a minute. So we're, right now we're setting up connection parameters, but then I have a feeling it's going to do the 20 version of this so that we know how to respond uh, for this specific device. And then, so that's five and six. Seven is the op code. Uh, where's my logs? Where's my logs at? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is one B. So one B is the character, but w wait, we've got different 21 and one A. Three, four, so it's device one, and then our op code is 0021 or 001A for battery and RSSI, and then it's 0011. That would be the characteristic handle, which is essentially just what command we are communicating, I guess. So then seven is the attribute op code. Uh, oh, 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 where is that? Attribute op code, and it's always 1B. All right. All right, all right, all right. Eight and nine, value offset is zero. This is weird information. Zero. And then this, 10, etc. is just a, it's just the value. It's just the, okay, so the characteristic handle, uh, sorry, it's the, so the characteristic handle is what specific command is being sent. And then the characteristic value is the information on it. And so we've we've been able to decode all that. So we're we are two commands away, I think, from getting this thing configured. Because we've told the receiver, hey, um, we've got this UUID that wants to connect. And then it goes back and it says, hey, set these characteristics. And so we set these characteristics, and then I think we're gonna get another one of these, like the, the 20 version of this, that's gonna say, hey, set it up as this, and then we'll know how to reply. I hope. <laughs> I hope, I hope we can make our software do all that stuff. So we can finally crack this egg wide open. I don't know why I'm cracking eggs. Maybe I'm hungry. Up we go, up we go, up we go, up we go. Now, where did I break down that whole thing? That would be this guy right here. Yeah, got characteristic value. 894117, blah, blah, blah. Is the characteristic value really 0017? Well, how do we respond to that? So A0894. Oh, it looks like we're already setting up that packet. Wait a minute. Did, wait, we respond with the setup? Hold on. <laughs> I crack a few eggs to make, yeah, a very specific thing that we're making. Uh, all right. Where are we with our serial? Uh, so he, I want my serial readout. So we receive 2831A. And then I think we send. Well, let's see. Let's see what the 2208. Uh, oh, God. All right. All right. All right. All right. I got to concentrate. And it's like poison can't concentrate on stuff. What are you talking about? Um, so 3-1-A, and it's a 20 command. We got to look that up, and we got to see how we respond to it. Ah! Hold on. I got to cut and paste it from the tables so that I can find the right thing right here. Uh... Zero, 03. We're looking for 1A and it's a 20 command. There, I, maybe the website would be easier because we could just look these up on the website. Oh well. 31A and it's a type 20. Oh my god, look at all the text on this. Connect to an advertising device with a specified initializing fee on which connectable advertisement, blah, 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 blah. Cancel an ongoing connection. Process, use the connection close command with the handle received in response for this command. 
Connections open in no security mode. If the GAT client needs to read or write the attributes, blah, 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 blah. If a connection can't be established, blah, 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 the stack will try to connect forever. In this case, the application will not get an event related to the connection request. Discover from the situation, the application can implement a timeout called let connection close in order to cancel the connection request. This command falls within the connection limit exceeded error if the number of connections exceeds the configured max connections value. It's like a billion. Uh, this command falls with the invalid parameter error that, oh god, I don't care. Later calls of this command can wait for an ongoing to complete. This is all stuff we don't really need to know. Um, our response, now we've responded, but I think maybe we didn't respond correctly. So we need to put together the let response, um, and I need to see... So it's a handle that will be assigned to the connection after the connection is established. And the handle remains 01. So we'll keep it as 01. So this would be uh, in our code, gap connect one. Now, I leave that as gap connect. Uh, device ID, and then I need, what do I need to do for the device ID? I could store a bunch of different stuff and we could use it over and over again, or we could just store the handle in, in the, I mean, it could just be a constant byte. We could just do uh, one and then we can give it, so. We'll just, we'll just keep all this stuff here just, just because we'll reference it, I guess. So this would be <coughs> our 1D, 2C. Excuse me. Got a fucking terrible cough, man. I mean, this is this is essentially what we respond to in order to connect our device. Maybe we just keep it up there. But do we give it a handle up here? I don't think we do. Which one is that? This this command is uh three zero. What does the three zero command do? Does the three zero command contain a Uh, a UUID or it, it, it does it doesn't contain the handle. Uh, I'm just gonna look it up on the sheet. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that we we get the information that we need, um, and that we respond properly. But we can if we can just declare the packet to be a thing with a handle, then we can just use that information in order to populate the other stuff. So we could just have it. I don't need to make new variables with overlapping information, you know? 3B, 3A, 313, 326, 1A, 02 hike. Uh, 30, there it is. Open address, device to connect to, and then the response that we send, uh, wait a minute, which one do we, we send a, a zero, so we're sending, Huh. What are we? Wait a minute. We're the one that we're the one that knocks. We're the one that tells it stuff's going on. Appreciated. Ah, oh, see. So we're let's look for the A zero three zero. Man, this twenty and A zero crap is really confusing. Oh my god! Everything is a three command. Everything. Everything is a three. That was three, two, three, four, three, one. It feels like we're close, but we're actually not. All right, so here's the A zeros. Three, two, three, zero. Here we go. Event Legap scan response. Bluetooth address. Bonding handle. So position 13. So that would be zero, one, two, three. Uh, sorry, zero, one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it tries to go for 0, huh? It tries to go for 0, and then it's assigned 1. What's up, Athenor? So it is giving us the handle. Unless this is depreciated. No, this is the right one. Hold on, let me read. 
Reports any advertising scan response packet that's received by the radio while in scanning mode. Note that this event will be replaced by Legap Extend Scan Response if Extended Scan Response event is enabled. I don't know what that means. Uh, disabled using the command, blah 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 command. Now remember, we're emulating this module. We're not, uh, you know, whatever, but... <laughs> We're emulating this module. We're not trying to communicate with it. So a lot of the stuff that it says is not really, it doesn't really apply to us. We don't care. Um, how's our temperature doing, by the way? All right, so I can probably get that in just a minute here. And then I'll have to spool up the next print. So we do all this. We know all that song and dance. Six to 11 is the Bluetooth ID. And then Bonding handle if the remote advertising device previously bonded with the local device. I mean, we could just set up like four devices that will always bond with their own handle instead of having it make it, but it would be nice if it could actually make the handle, but it doesn't need to, but uh, okay. So position 13 of the bonding packet So we can make our thing print out the bonding handle and then we could just use it again. Possibly. But it's always zero in ours. Double check. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, zero. This is where we could put our, our bonding handle if we, if, we, if we were so inclined, we could put it there. So I could call that a one, but, but I'm getting zero, zero. So I think maybe Granted Devices didn't implement this. Although, although if it was previously bonded, their software keys into that and it just automatically connects. So I don't know what's going on with that. That could save us a little bit, a little bit of time, possibly, although, <laughs> Oh boy, how would we how do we make it like pretend that it's scanning for devices and it gets all four of the things and then we bond them all? Oh my god. This is this is gonna be this sucks more than I thought it would. <laughs> I gotta use the bathroom, I gotta retrieve my 3D print. Let me do that and then we'll get into this a little bit more. Oops, hold on. Uh, that camera. Now assuming that things have cooled off enough. I should, and I've heard this stuff clicking away. It clicks like a car after you drive it on a mountaintop. Or, you know, you take it for a spirited drive, you hear all these clicking noises of all the metal contracting back. That's sort of what I've been hearing from this. This is quite, quite well connected there. Wow, ow, ah, fuck, ow! <laughs> that went all the way up my fingernail. Why am I using my fingernails? Owie. Man, it's like room temperature, and it's like impossible to get off of here. Yeah, there's gonna be like a little little blood under my fingernail for a bit. Let's try spritzing it. That causes it to cool just a, a little bit, and then it'll pop all off. It cools it, and it gets a little thing in between the two layers so that you uh, you can separate it a little bit faster. I mean, I really should just wait for this to fully cool, because uh, otherwise I'm pretty much asking my bed to shred itself. Okay, there we go. So now I need to spool up another print. I don't have it ready to go, so just give me a second here on my other computer. And let me take, uh, you guys can't see this, you're not allowed to, because my other computer is just completely infiltrated with porn. It's just wall to wall. <clears throat> wall to wall porn. Look at all this porn that I gotta get out of the way. All right, so delete that. Now, which one was that? That was the side. I need to do the front panel. So let's get the files for the front panel. They're still in the folder. 
front uh front this one's the fan holder side top psu front left upper there we go i got weird names for all these files so i'm going to basically create one solid and duplicate it i'm going to dupe it if the right click menu would actually work in this piece of freaking software jeez there it is Add instance, there we go. Uh, then put these things down on flat on the bed. Rotate this one 180. And put them inside of one another, all fancy like. So they take up less space. Slice it, dice it, make it happen. All right, so while this thing does its thing, I'm gonna do my thing and I'll be right back. Let me uh, put up a BRB. Uh, hit you guys with a little bit of metronomic live. At least no stuff's going on. Alright, I'll be right back. I still don't know where my dust pan went to. Yeah, I was heating up that whole time. <laughs> This is the not so exciting process of leveling. Pause. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. <coughs> Hold on. Next. I can make a multi-action where when I mute myself, it'll put a little mute thing up in the corner. I could have it do a little mute. Hold on, let me uh, let me do that. So uh, mute PNG. Hmm, that's a good looking one. Let's see. Now, it's more than likely that any of the images that I find are not going to actually have transparency. They're just going to be lies. That one's okay. I don't know. Huh. Let me see here. Hmm. Just kind of looking for one that looks okay. That was a no bell. What do you think my voice sounds like? It doesn't sound like a, ve a bell. Shutterstock. Oh, they're going to try to... Me, it's royalty-free, huh? 
M U E T S. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> So let's see. I, uh, let me just find one first. Oh, yeah, they're all Shutterstock, so. They're not quite gonna look right, are they? Download for free? Of course I wanna give you all my information. God damn it. Alright, hold on. I gotta, I gotta be able to find you. Mute file type. PNG. Mute file type PNG. None of you have transparency. I might have to make one. Are people that afraid to, like, host stuff? It goes there. Let's take a look at it. Go in folder. Open it. <laughs> the little, the little cross-hatching. Hey, Kimera, the, the little cross hatching on the PNG is, is on the image. It's not, it's not actually transparent. What a load of horse shit. All right. You stupid things. It's like, it's like you got to make your own symbols for everything these days. Oh, that one actually just straight up downloaded, huh? Yeah. More props to you, pngall.com. Pingall.com. Pngall.com. I'm going to have to try to remember that site. Demiful! 35 months! Dude, thank you so much for the 35 months. Woohoo, prepaid entertainment. Hey, you know, you know how it is. I always hate it when, uh, when the people on Twitch are like, are like, but you're getting this for free. So you should be you should be happy that I've interrupted your content. I like I hate that attitude, man. But this is free entertainment, so do you think people would pay you to do this at like a studio? Like <laughs> Of course it's free. That's why we're here. Anywho. <laughs> Thank you, Demi, for the 35 months. You help uh, justify my idiotic lifestyle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to... The, the support structure, by the way, is coming off of these things very, very easily. You prepaid three months. Oh! Oh, yeah, I didn't get an alert about that. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Demi. I really do. I really do appreciate you guys continuing to sub to me without all of the incentives. Let's put this mute logo up whenever I mute myself. Here, I'm gonna go back to this view because uh, this everybody knows that the 3D printer is, is a better performer than I am. So, uh, boop, boop, bop, bop, bop. What am I doing? I am going to the stream deck. Oh, <coughs> uh, wait a minute. That would mean. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, I guess I could toggle the transparency of the thing whenever I mute. The noun project for royalty-free icon. Noun project, free icons and stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'll um, I'll leave that up today. Well, I'll, I'll favorite it. <laughs> I'll come back to that in six years. Okay, so we got I got a mute logo. <laughs> Your incentive, yeah, it's the most used emote. So if I put in the overlays and I do a little plus on that and I do an image and the image is mute, I'm creating a new one. I browse my computer for it. The problem is if I browse the computer for it, then it needs to actually go in a, in a, um, it needs to go in a different folder because otherwise it'll be in my downloads folder and then I'll delete it eventually and that won't be good. Probably have to like come up with a better. This this needs to be white instead of black. I don't know why it came in in black. <laughs> the yay emote. I like that emote. 
Uh, unload image would not apply alpha in linear space. I don't know, that doesn't do anything. Uh, let's see here. Properties. No, I want filters on it, I guess, in order to make it bright. I need to find one that looks like really digital, like a like a green one from like an old TV. Uh, chroma key color correction. Gamma. Contrast. No gamma. All contrast. Nothing is changing. Brightness. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Color multiply. I wonder if I can make it more green. I can indeed make it green, but I don't know if that looks right. And then we'll add like a little transparency to it. Uh, virtual cam is in my plugins. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll do this. Whatever, I'm going to leave it green for now, just so it's obnoxious. And then, let's see. If I do on the stream deck, what I can do is do... Uh, I don't have enough room to to make this. Well, let me, let me just put it... Let me just try it in the overlays section of the stream deck. I'm going to do a new multi-action. Create multi-action, and then I need a mute in there no 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 not that no now what did it it just moved the tile what is it doing all right i need that to be there and then i need to add there we go drag action from the right now what jesus christ where'd you get a why does somebody have a balls deep emote that's ugh <laughs> creep factor well Makes sense. That's the right name of a streamer. Jeez. All right. Uh, I want it to mute, and then I want it to turn on that overlay. This is boring. I'm bored. Uh. <laughs> I'm very bored right now. This is boring. I should be doing this another time. Mm. Where'd that thing come from? It wasn't voice mod. I don't think so. Where did I get that from? System? No. Control center? No. Why are there so many battery monitors on this thing? On off switch for MQTT. System, Streamlabs, Desktop, no. Stream Deck, no. Sound the board, no. OBS, oh yeah, Mixer Audio. Uh. Mute. Do I do? Ah, so it's only an activate or deactivate, and you gotta change it when you push the button. Ugh, I don't wanna do this right now. <laughs> Well, Activate would also do, uh, where's OBS? OBS Studio, and then it would be, like, uh, Source would be Image Scene. Oh, no, that just brings us to another one. Okay, not that one. Uh, source, Stream, Record, Mixer, Audio, or Scene. No, it would be Source. But it wouldn't be... Those are the no, those are sources though. Oh, there we go. Overlays. What did I call it? I called it mute, right? It's in Pedal Bad Hair Day, Streamlabs, Fly, Peep Show, Bubby 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 Ba. Oh, it's not even on this. It's it didn't get into the so that would be over here. And then that one is called mute. If I put that in overlays. Let's see if let's see if the stream deck got it. It didn't get it yet. Oh no, there it is. Hey. Mute activate, source activate. We can just try that button out. 
I don't, uh, probably, it didn't even mute me. Uh, it didn't even mute me. <laughs> Button broken. Perfect. Oh, wait, that activates both. So if it's both of these are deactivate. Well, that one would be activate, and then I'd have to deactivate it here. Now I'm unmuted. It didn't do anything. It didn't do either. You are supposed to be active. Oh. It, oh, oh. Does it need to be on every scene? So is it only going to work here? Unmute. Nope, it doesn't work at all. Gloucestershire. <laughs> Just call it Shire Sauce. That's all it is. It's the Shire Sauce. Overlays. Mute. Activate. Mixer audio, mute. Push the button. It doesn't deactivate. I have to program that, but it has it does it does do the one part of the action. So if I wanted to, I could make a mute button that does that and then puts that logo up in the corner. Uh. Oh, no, that's for the icon. Okay. Uh, is there a separate contents to actions? That's just one multi-action, but it doesn't switch to a different action when I... Like, I, I need to have it toggle. It needs to be one button. Hmm. Yeah, see, like, this one has mute and unmute. This one does not. It doesn't have a, a separate state. Yeah. Okay, all right, never mind. I'm not going to do a mute button then. Would have been nice, though, because when I mute myself, I could have a little, a little mute thing come up in the corner. I'll keep that overlay, just in case I want to use it again. Hello? I guess it needs to be active for me to, to mess with it. Uh, where is mute? I also need to give it a little bit more of like a like an old TV quality to it, like like a pixelated uh, sort of old school green TV effect look instead of that. That's a little too chunky, a little too chunk of thunk. All right, all right. So we were programming stuff, which is even more exciting than you would ever believe. How's the printer doing? It is printering. The reds are looking red. I wish they were a little deeper, but. I don't know, nah, maybe not scan lines, I don't know, I don't know. The chromatic aberration that people love is a little played out. That red is just a little bit pink. I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to what we were doing. So, um... Oh, yeah, that's right, I was mad enough to make this picture. <laughs> I can't say like foot pedal on Twitch. They don't they don't like that. I don't it's so stupid. It's not that's not a bad word. All right. Um we're trying to register as a module. It appears as though the Granite Devices controller tells us uh or rather we tell the Granite Devices controller, "Hey, I've got this module and I'd like to make it zero." And then the Granite Device or Devices controller comes back and goes, "No, no, 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 no." Uh, you actually have a different address. You have, your address is now one. Uh, we can fake that. We don't necessarily need to store and regurgitate exactly the address variable. But we might run into some problems when we try to register the, the device. It might, um, it might try to give us a registration, in which case we will need to build all of, this, all of the, the subsequent communications on that info. So I guess we're going to have a device one, a device two, a device three. So we're going to have to do a device. That's what this is right here. This device right here. 
or this 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 variable and i think that can just be a byte is our device one and then we'll store that as 0x00 for now, but that byte will be replaced when we read it from the packet. So what we're doing right now is we're getting a packet back from the base station, and it says, Oi, set these parameters, event lay connection parameters. And it goes, ow, ow, eight, two, one, ow, three, nine, six, one, uh, 20, oh, two, nine, seven, uh. Right, and then we respond to that. So we're gonna to respond to that, and we're gonna say, all right, fine, whatever you say, you fucking weirdo. And then we'll be able to actually move on from there, as long as we continually identify our packet as that address. Ugh. It's gonna be kind of a, a beast to get through all this. I can't believe how difficult this has become a little later on. I mean, we've got like these fixed parameters that are being set, but now th everything is just branching pathways now. It's starting to get kind of complicated. But anyway, I mean, it, we we brought this on ourselves. We requested this information. So um, so we send the connection. And in this case, we are assigning it to... No, we're setting it to zero, aren't we? Data channel latency. A03961. Uh, what is, does this one have? Maximum data channel PDU. No, see, this is this is where. All right, let's ignore that. Let's ignore that. Let's go over to here. Twenty-eight three one A. You see, this here's where it's saying, here's the parameters we want to assign you to. O one. Where is that O one? I'm trying to remember where I was and explaining this and working on this so that I can continue on, but because we want to respond to exactly this thing. Which is right up here, right? Three zero. Oh no, that's where we bond and we give it we give it a zero and then we get back this command, and then this command is a 031A. Uh, no, 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 no. Every time I do that, it takes me all the way back to the top. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so 31A. So we want number two to be three. Oops. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want that. I want this. No, I want this. I want that to be 03. And so we're looking for 23, so we're looking for 30, and it's a 20. Because this is what we need to respond to. Three one a Oh, wait, that was it. So that is uh, Legap Connect. So it says, hey, connect. And uh, here is a... Hold on, wait. Three one A, and then it's doing all that stuff, and then at the very end, it's the handle. So this is the response to the gap, uh, gap lay connect response that we get. What do we do as as in a result to that? Do we just give it an OK back? Wait, we're getting a response, or do we need to respond with the initiating fee value? As the 11th... What the fuck? Because this is, this is the address of the controller. What, uh, wait. Huh? Yeah, we shouldn't be getting... Should be getting a response. We're getting this command out of the blue. Not really out of the blue. I mean, we've done... Sending device registration, and then we get this back. 28.3.1a.1d, blah, 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 0, 1. I think it's assigning it as, as 0, 1, because uh, 2cc42e84, that's the address, I believe. Where's the MAC address of this thing? It's, it's somewhere in this sheet. So 
scroll, scroll, scroll. Hold on, I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my bearings again because I totally lost it. I'm like, uh, any, any minor distraction is just, I'm just latching onto it right now. I think I need to sit down with like a pot of coffee and like a, like an isolation chamber and uh, just work on this. Where is our address? Start discovery. Discover all. Received. So we say okay to that. Scan response. Scan response. Data packet from above. All right, so where's our... Where did I put it in this, in this big sheet of stuff? Eighty four two E blah 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 one D. Yeah, so it is it is our it is our one A. Oh no, there's a one A on the way. Oh three one A and then one D two C C four. So that's that's the Bluetooth ID and then it gives us our address. So it is giving us back the Bluetooth ID and saying here's the address for that Bluetooth ID. So our dav one, our device number one, we need to punch that into there when we receive this packet. And so that one is 031A, that's here. So we send it back that we succeeded, and I think we need to alter that. I think we need to alter that. Uh, what's going on with this? Why am I stopping a new timer? I guess timer four was something... Hmm. When we get that back, we're canceling our fourth timer. I don't know what that's all about. So, command legap can connect, and then I have a button test, and I should disable that. So that's not doing anything. Yeah, I think that was like... When we get the command to connect or something... But we're printing out like another 31A. Or rather, this isn't recognized. Hold on a minute. 031A. Oh, I just have it. I just have it printing that out. So yeah, when we get the 31A, I think we're supposed to. We're not supposed to be printing the 31A, are we? Sending the device le registration. Something else is going on here. <laughs> I think I'm sending it that registration, and then it's replying that the registration is good. I don't know where else we would be sending Gap Connect, or rather, receiving Gap Connect, because we're receiving Gap Connect and we're responding to it. Hold on a minute. Okay, so Gap Start Discovery. It looks like okay. So we're printing out what we send it. Okay, so this isn't received. This is something that we are sending out. We just need to make sure that it's in the right form. It looks like it's not in the right form. So that's something that we're, we're transmitting. I see what's going on. So I put a command in there that made us respond to that uh, event. So we're sending 28.3, 1A, 1D, etc. 01. Maybe it doesn't like it? I don't know. Because I had print packet in there. And then we get, we received another gap connect. So did it not like that? Start discovery, we send the registration. So it's when we get start discovery. Start discovery. So discovery is equal to one. And then, I think that's when we have to send our packet, right? Then we wait for the timer. This is disabling the timer. That's after we get the 31A. I see. So we need to send it the packet 
So what happens is if we're discovery mode is one and our timer's expired, aha, here we go. So we're, we're doing the Hey, It's Me timer and that is sending over the, the address that we're looking for. So Hey, It's Me is all the way up here. Uh, hey, It's Me, send the device one, sending device registration and then return a one to say that our timer's up. Uh, we're only disabling it. Right, okay, so our art, timer keeps going and we keep returning a one from this and it it just keeps going right 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 this just keeps going until we get a signal that says that you are registered and so the the base station has to say you're registered in this case we get command log app connect which is this guy disables the timer we're sending it back a success that's the wrong thing we need to send something functional in in response to command the gap connect and we can store the id and everything that is assigned to it uh when that packet comes in we get the 031a uh and that is 31a we need to store this byte right here so this byte is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 10 9 8 7 so this is the seventh position. So this would be um, the variable we just made. R dev one is equal to uh, input buffer of seven. So now I've got that byte that has our ID in it. Now I could I could do all kinds of tricks to to make us so that we can uh, register multiple devices. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I don't know how I'm going to do the logic of the multiple device thing. That's going to be tough. We're going to have to like put it through uh, like maybe a, a separate state machine that's in this. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to have like a four state machine for register one, register two, register three, register four. But that'll enable twenty eight times four buttons. That's a phenomenal amount. We're just going to worry about one device right now, and then we'll make it funny sex number, and then everybody can chuckle and we can move on. So, input buffer of seven is going to be our device one. So now our address is in there. Um, we don't need it to print the packet, and we need to change how it's sending a success back because we've gotten this packet. Wow, do we respond to it? How do we respond to this sort of, uh, this sort of disrespect? Command gap connect. Uh, all right, so we need to look up on the sheet how to respond. Ah, that's where we are. Man, it took me, what, four hours to figure out where the hell we were? <laughs> Our response. Do we really send a 20 in response? 23.3 result code zero and then six is the handle that will be assigned to the connection after the connection is established handles only if the result code of the response is zero valid only if the result code of the response is zero somehow we have to now send it 233 three. all right one a and then zero and then the handle so we need a big variable array that we send back, and that's going to be our... Because it needs to be a variable because I want to just punch the number into the end of it so that it sends with everything else. So we'll just do... Um, command look app. <laughs> These fucking commands, man. <clears throat> Actually, I could, I could put it in the prog mem if we just give it one, two, three, and four. No, but then we'd have to match it up to whatever that, whatever this is, so. Byte array. Uh, command the gap, connect, one. No, it's actually just the whole thing. We just want the whole thing. Do I already have that programmed in? Yeah, command the gap, connect. I don't have the whole thing implemented though. 
We'll just get rid of it here. Put it there, put that there. Now we need the other information that's in here. So the other information is doot doot doot. The other information is not there. Uh, it's from the data sheet. And the data sheet tells us that we are doing 03, 1A, length should be 3. Four plus, yeah, so uh, 23, 03, 1A. And then 4 and 5 is result code. The result code is all zeros. And then the handle, which we can just make zero for now, but it is the zero, one, two, three, four, five, sixth position in command legap connect. So that would be. Uh, Go all the way down here, and we need to send that packet. So what we do is we do our device number one is equal to command, no, uh, command look app connect, Jesus. Command look app connect of seven, because it's uh, four, five, six, seven, yeah is equal to r dev one so that sets that up and now we can sned uh command play gap connect done god damn so that might get us to the next step you guys think literally nobody's following along thank you for having me in the background <laughs> So we need we need a particular response from the command that it's sending us. Now we're gonna send the right thing. So yeah, let's see it work. Put your money where your mouth is, right? Oh, like that random Star Wars radio voice guy? Sir, we haven't found him in the hills. <laughs> if they've gone to Tatooine, you know you're like, ah, the guy's got a radio voice. What's going on? Alright, get rid of this. I feel attacked. <laughs> Thank you for sitting there and watching my stream. All right, um, let's check to see whether or not this thing is going to compile. So what we're doing right now is we are putting together our code. Sorry, dude, you make for good background sounds. <laughs> Occasional screaming. Uh, oh, we need to give this a length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, if that only has seven positions, hold on. Fucking get it wrong. Might have gotten it wrong. Oh, it only has six positions. Hold on. So that's seven. And then all the references to it are, are actually six. Six. We want this one. We want this one. Uh, yeah, so what uh, what we're doing, and I, I hey, guys, the, those of you who, who have me on in the background, I really appreciate you guys. I, I really do. Uh, I love getting the views. Very nice, and my ego is is sated. Um, what we're trying to do is get this thing to fake its ID as a module. And so there is a bit of handshake going on here pertaining to the connection of devices. Now, obviously, if we had some kind of an API, it wouldn't be this much of a handshake. It would be like, yo, I want to directly communicate some stuff to you. And then the receiver's like, hey, give me what you got. And then we, we could just jump from there. But instead, we have to do this entire song and dance, pretending that we are, in fact, a wireless module that randomly wants to connect with the rest of the system and then have it uh, go through the, the registration process so that we can identify ourselves as one simple ID. We're going to writing phase one environmental site assessment. Your voice pulls just enough of my mind away from going totally insane. I've done those before. I've, I've done that before. Those are tough. Phase one's my least favorite part. Yeah, I, I don't know what phase I worked on. I worked on like some kind of environmental uh, like 
light pollution kind of thing and per in pertaining to like the 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 plans for like a university and you know where were the lights how much light pollution do they put out like what's the radius of the light oh my god it was nuts a lot of calculating a lot of, a lot of dumb stuff yeah it's it's very you are like a computer algorithm that's putting in uh numbers <laughs> if the numbers don't add up you don't get certification good work all right, so we have we have actually registered our first device. So in this case, this would be the area where I'd be able to put in code that would allow us to register multiple devices. But I, I don't know what the next steps are. There might be multiple steps per thing. Let's find out. So what's going to happen is we're going to go through this whole song and dance. We've got packets that we've identified that we just simply respond to with like a, yeah, I got your packet. And we don't actually adjust anything because we're not a wireless module. There's a lot of those. Once we get through those, we get to um, a timer that's being set that has basically an interval on it. It basically says, hey, start discovery. We set our own timer, but there's other timers in the background that are telling this thing to go to the next phases of what it's doing. It's very strange. It's very strange how it works uh, with the timers. But apparently Granite Devices uses the timers. So we made our own timer. We added our own timer to the mix. And that timer is to fake uh, the module thinking. Uh, so we're faking the module thinking, and then we come back and we say, uh, I want to register this device. And it goes, oh, well, its ID is one. And so now we're replying to that ID being one, and we're going to see what is said after that. We have all of the packets in here. We're reading them correctly. We're transmitting them correctly. When we get a packet we don't recognize, we just print it back, and we actually send a... Uh, we send a generic success just in case. It's the, oh yeah, I totally know what you're asking me to do. So it would, <laughs> our, our previous code would have sent back the generic thing and then the base station would be like, what are you talking about? And, and all kinds of like stuff got canceled as a result. So let's just see if we can fake it till we make it now. Um, yeah, let's applaud this code. See where it breaks. I can't believe you've done this. RSSI packet needs one element. Huh? Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Bada bing. Bada boom. You son of a bitch. I forgot it on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So these are the packets that we can later on use to communicate our RSSI and our battery value. Those will have to be assigned to timers. It might, I don't know, maybe it sets up its own timer for this. That's possible. All right, so now what we do is we open up the serial monitor, and I start up the device, and we see what kind of text we get out of this thing. Power on. There it goes. Ah, same result, huh? Oh, no, what did I just drag and drop? What the hell is that? Wait, why are my... Why is my... Okay, never mind. It's all it's all back together. Okay. So we just pretty much stop at device gap connect again. Uh, so are we sending the right thing? Are we receiving the right thing? I don't believe that there's any errors in there. We haven't received an unknown packet. We just received command legap connect. We our response was not really recognized, was it? Command legap connect. Is there something that's sent after this? So we deactivate our timer. Input buffer. We take our packet in. We set it to be the right uh, location on command legap connect. And then we send command legap connect. And it's position six. And it's whatever they gave us. Hmm. Hmm. 
and we don't get anything back in response. Uh, oh, disco is equal to zero. Because then, oh, but if we deactivate our timer, that would be just for the one. But we've received gap connect. Four is deactivated. Disco. Go to zero. So that'll at least get us out of that mode. We won't send it again. Although I don't think we're going to send it again. Oh no, we already set Disco to zero. Okay, never mind. Discovery happens once. <laughs> Hot glue hurts like napalm. Yeah, you can get some burns, man. I had, a, I had a kid in high school who, a friend of mine in high school, friend of mine? Yeah, a friend of mine. Uh, in high school who did the, just the smartest thing in the world. No, grade school, grade school. This is like seventh, sixth grade. He glued a bunch of cellophane, like the colored cellophane things to each of his fingers. And he was like, ha ha ha, it burns. He got like first degree burns on all his fingertips. <laughs> yeah, mess around with hot glue. That stuff is, well, characteristically hot. Make a little squeaky noises as it does. Look at that beautiful red stuff. It's it's not, I don't know. It's it's not as deep red as I would like it to be. There's not a lot of light on it right now, but it's like the, I don't know. I guess it looks pretty red here. It looks pretty red over here. But like from the front, there's like a little bit of a pink quality to it. It's not quite as like, like this is deep red. This is a little bit pink. Oh well. I don't know what to do about that. Use hot glue with my fingers playing guitars? I have mad calluses though. Use hot glue on your fingers playing guitar? Wait, what? Huh? That's a thing? Is that like a mute? I had a guy in high school put a soldering iron through plastic mains cover on the same sort of menace. What? The fuck? <laughs> Why would you do that? Alright, alright. We're not getting a, a like anything. We don't end the procedure. It doesn't ask for RSSI. What does it expect in response? So we send the packets, connection parameters. We're looking for that, like a 3-1 or if we have to send, maybe we have to respond with the connection parameters next. Cause like we had a button packet come in and then we had our device respond with the connection parameters. Uh, the event lit connection parameters. But we didn't have it really like set parameters, did we? SM configured. No, it did. Set connection parameters. Configure. Start discovery with those configuration values. Send the device registration. Gap connect. I should probably put something in here, too. We should do this. And then we should do... We'll put the timers in a little block. Put those in a little block. And then transmit. Command log app connect. And then we do whatever we need to do down here. There we go. That's a little better. Uh, I'm just kind of like rearranging how, how these look because they should actually... First thing they should do is print out that we received something and then we sent the success. and then we have a result of our actions, and then we clear the packet, and then we move on. I can, I can make that a little bit more compact. 
it's kind of a weird way that we're going through this. Clean up the code. Make it look good. That's all I can do right now. Not to go crazy. <laughs> Have it go in a little bit more of a logical order, huh? So my R's, uh, instead of, wait, it's not, it should be a T. T for transmit. So received legap connect, transmit legap connect. and serial, and then the result of what it's telling us we're doing. So it sends that, and then, well, this would be stop the, uh, whatever, whatever that is. What is that again? Uh, stop the, uh, fake thinking timer. And then this one is, uh, load up the device ID. And we're not we're not telling it we're sending a success every single time because that's kind of gonna that's just gonna cause a text spam. Indexing the wrong byte on the response. Input buffer of six, position six. Oh, five, four, three, two. Ah, yes. Yes. Because the input buffer doesn't have the uh, the addresses in it. You're correct, sir. That's a that's a good get. And I guess I guess our, our next troubleshooting step could have been to serial print the number that we get, but good call. All right, let's try that. Now that I've cleaned up the serial prints a little bit, too. It's going to look the same as it did before, but maybe we'll get different information now. Serial's sharded! Turn it off. Device off. Device back on. Boop. Reverse engineering is not giving up. That's the best, that's the biggest thing about reverse engineering. Well, we transmitted it, and we're still fucked. <laughs> We sent it! It didn't do anything! Five, four, three, two, zero, one, two. No, it should be it should be six, because it stores it in the very end of the packet. The length of this is five. Wait a minute. No 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 no. We're back. We're up to uh blah 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 blah. Command legap connect is seven. So we're zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where we're referencing. We're getting this number here at the end of the packet. And then our software comes in and it prints out these four values and then indexes three minus one and goes zero, one, two, and transmits that. We're very lucky that they give us a length of the packet and not, it's not just like a known thing for every packet. Otherwise, we'd have to build up an index of packet lengths that, that things are supposed to be. It's, it's very nice of them to have that length in there. <laughs> we should be sending it the right thing. Uh, let me do... I mean, I can, I can just do, uh, and then ID space and then serial print line. And then it would just be R dev or no print F and then serial print line. And then we use an indexing array counter in order to, Double backtrace the 
primal linear value of the index registration field uh our device one and then print line is just print line okay let's just take a look at what that looks like it's probably not going to give us any new information but if we get 01 we know that something is working and if we get 00 that we know something is broke God, this device is like could you please stop turning me off and on again please power switch is gonna wear out beep boop beep bop 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 oh uh, whoops it's percent it's percent o2 not 20. c4 well that ain't right at all well we th there's our smoking gun so good thing we did a serial print why we get c4 Where the hell is that coming from it's not it shouldn't be endian and we saw the packet. We saw the packet. Where's C4 coming from? You little bastard. Hmm. Zero, one, two. Oh no, these aren't stored. Zero, one, two, three, four. No, that doesn't make any sense. I thought I might be getting like the MAC address or something. What's a MAC address? It doesn't have a C4 in it, I don't think. R device one. Uh <coughs> somehow this becomes C4. I wonder if the module is responsible for defining the handle number. Well, if it is, uh, then we are doing everything correct and nothing is happening anymore. Unless maybe it expects us to respond as C4 to say something. And it might just be waiting for another response, but it didn't set up any timers, so. Could it be waiting for a button press? Mm -mm -mm. I mean, C4 is one of the values of the, um, let's run it again. Let's run it again and see if it gives us a different, uh, a different ID when we boot it up again. Hello? Serial monitor? There it is. Serial's ready to go. Boot him up again. I do wish I could just like force the module registration, but that's the same number. Okay, so we're either getting a bad, bad data location or something else is awry. The packet is command the gap connect, right? And not our device one. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Am I doing the wrong variable? No, that's the, that's the right one. R device one is equal to the input buffer position two zero one two because when we get the packet in, we push it into the input buffer which has thirty locations on it. Looking for that, that's just like right here. Uh, where's the input buffer? Yeah, there it is. Byte input buffer, 30, 30 bytes. Um, we store the four things, and then we store whatever else is transmitted based on the length parameter. So the length parameter is given to us as three, so we store zero, one, two. And when we call on it, zero one two we call on the last thing that it's stored input buffer location two that should work why doesn't that work it would be number three and then zero one two location two should be the data packet which gives us the um id unless i counted stuff wrong but i don't think i did Uh, 
Oh, that's the response. The command is given as this. So we actually want, because that whole address is there. We want, we want position 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 of the input buffer. Oh, and then we want command the gap of 2. Jesus. Actually, no, we do want 6 because the command legap packet that we put together has the four in there and it's a position this is this is a mess uh yeah we want six because we're, we want five no 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 wait that wait our device one is our device Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because it's seven in length. Wait, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and that matches up with the data sheet. Zero to, uh, my brain. Zero to six. Yeah, and we want to directly program that. Okay, I think, I think that might have done it. I think that one number change. It's, it's just the position in the packet that we receive. Um... Because what we get back is something with the MAC address and then the ID at the end. And then we send that other packet. Wait, but we looked at the... Yeah, no, that is correct. That is correct. I think this is correct. I think this is correct. I think this is correct. I think we got it. 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 <laughs> this code will eventually turn into reg registering multiple devices. But for now... Um, yeah, here, wait. Uh... Save that for future me when I'm trying to put more buttons on the arcade thing. Okay, so we... Do we upload it? Done saving. I'm going to hit upload. I like I like it when the program gets into this state where we're just rearranging, like, stuff that we've already figured out. Like, we know stuff works. We're just doing the minor shuffling of things and using, you know, easy, easy verified commands in order to put together this complicated behavior. Because we know, we know our serial is sending and receiving properly based on all the parameters we're getting. We don't have to question that anymore. I like that. Okay. All right, you little bastard. All right, you little bastard. Ugh. ID is zero, so that's not... Something's still not right. Should have an ID of one. And let's just print the packet out at this point. Let's print the packet that we just got. We'll just we'll just verify what's in the input buffer. I wish I had there was a reset button on this module. I wish I I wish I could hit the reset button. But they they desoldered it and they got rid of it on the circuit board of the version that I have. So 1 2 3 4. This is the this is what's in the input buffer. 0 1 2 3 4 5 6. Oh, we want 7. Oh, because it's the two. Oh. Wait, is that right? Huh? So why are we getting, I guess the handle can be, but it doesn't say UN8 array. Uh, UN16 is the result code. That's four and five. No, we're talking about this one. Sorry. Address type, and then the initializing value. So we want, oh god, input buffer of seven, and then that goes into our six. He's on my six. All right, let's see. This might do it. We might actually get a result. Let's 
God, it took actually printing out the entire packet and then counting with my thingies in order to figure out what the hell is going on. Let's see if we get the proper address, though. Bada bing. But it still doesn't respond to it properly. God damn it. <laughs> it still doesn't respond to it properly. Look at all those sarcomotes. Ah, damn it. <laughs> why are you, why do you forsake me? What's our temperature at on this thing? Can I retrieve my, uh, my prints? Please give me the prints. Hmm, still a little bit warm for that. I can force the issue with Windex, but I don't want to. I don't want to rip up my bed. So we'll give it an, another minute until I, until I have to go get stuff. All right. So what's going on now? We've got the ID. We got all that because apparently our packet was a little bit longer than we thought it was originally. We don't really need to print that again. We've sent back the the information. Command Legap Connect. And we've punched our device ID into the command connect packet. We can, we can change that in the future if we need to, but we've been given the, the ID of one. I wonder what happens if we send another device connect immediately. Well, what I can do is once it connects, I can send a button test. Like immediately. So we can immediately send a button test. So if we send button test, and I make a, I think I made a clear packet, set timer, button test, timer active number four, timer every 1000, dumb butt. Hey, you dumb butt. <laughs> send the dumb butt over. So we wait like a full second and then we send dumb butt. Dumb butt is all the way up here because these are timer specific ones. So dumb butt, if the button, <coughs> sorry, if the button position of 11 is zero, send or change it to a one, otherwise change it to a zero and then send. So we press for one second and we release for one second, right? Press for one second, release for one second. Our packet is there. The ID is in there correctly, even though uh, I really should do, I should set that value of the packet to be device one. But device one is still valid. So if it is going to be doing that, then I think we can do the button test and that'll set up the timer. And then we'll see what packet we get in response. And if we get a packet we don't understand back, it'll print that out. Or we will see the button getting pressed in the Granite Devices software, this stuff right here. Right now, button 1 to 128, nothing's happening except for the one that we have locked down. But our wireless wheel is supposedly connected, even though nothing has really been set up. And maybe, maybe those, the RSSI and the battery response are what's needed uh, next. But, because uh, we currently, it doesn't say it's connected, which is, uh, I think, further furthering that handshake along. But we know we're responding correctly. We're responding with what needs to be said right now, which is the, the packet that's in response to the, uh, to the button being pressed. We could look at the logs and see whether or not we're doing the right thing. But I'm going to try pushing a button. Every one-th of a second, I'm going to push a button, and then I'm going to unpush it after that one-th of a second. So give me your serial monitor. And let me see what is going on. What is occurring in this space? Bada bing. Back on you go. And then it goes through all this stuff. ID is one. A little beep from the wheel. No button is being pushed. I can see the packet on the scope. We don't have, we didn't finish the handshake. There's more to the handshake, huh? But we don't see any response from, maybe we're supposed to do something now. Uh, maybe we're supposed to say something about our parameters. Can't you say something about our parameters? I went through all the trouble to register 
as a device, and you can't even give me the basic decency of parameters. Okay, so back up we go. Don't, no, now that I've said something, it lost all its meaning. Uh, let's see. Uh, dot, 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 dot. If discovery, hey, it me. Um. Button tests. They don't do that yet. So we're getting all the way to here. What happens in our log? So. See, we don't have a log of us sending anything. We don't have a log of us sending anything. So I'm wondering what happens in this handshake. Uh, the only problem is that I can't register another device. I, that we, we, I broke the transmitter. I broke it. Uh, I put too many volts through it and it's dead. It does not function. <sighs> First button packet comes in. And then we, so we're looking at right now on this log, this, this, this is our worksheet. It's like super disorganized. Um, but what it does contain is a byte for byte uh, representation of what's happening when the device connects to the base station. But we're only looking at one side. We're looking at the transmission from the base station to the receiver, to the, to the, sorry. We're looking at the, the transmissions from the Bluetooth module to the Granite Devices controller. We're not looking at the opposite direction. It'd be nice if we were. Probably should have made something that allowed us to do that, but we only have one direction on this. And, you know, I could have used, if I had gotten to where I was a little earlier with this and I had, I had properly done this, I could have actually had it, um, if, we, if we knew about the packet structure and everything ahead of time, I could have made something for the Arduino that listened on the two different lines and gave it a gave it a receive and transmit and then had the exact packets printed out after it so that we could see exactly the handshake that's going on. I didn't do that. We got close to it, but uh, yeah, I should have I should have done that from the get-go. That would have really eased it up. We just didn't know what serial protocol was going on. We didn't know what kind of communications were there. We didn't know anything about it. Um, until Uncle Phil pushed the issue of the API document, and we were able to find the proper API document. Should have done that earlier. I didn't know everything that is being transmitted would have been under that, under that packet structure, because the, the thing that was going through and interpreting all of this stuff, everywhere there was an A0, it was starting a new line. And sometimes there would be a 20, like in the middle of a line, and that was interpreted as something else. Really what it should have been doing is looking for a 20 or an A0 initially, and then it gets a packet length, and then it should only look at that, that length of data after the packet. Yeah, it's <laughs> hindsight is 2020 is the typical phrase in America. It's easy to be afterwise, as they say. What is that, like a, like a, like a tense or something like that? Like a future perfect or something? So, AL or uh, 8, 2, 1, AL 3, 9, 6, 1, blah, 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 blah. Um, we know what it's saying. It's saying something about the connection parameters. Do we just say that? Should we just say that? If we just say that, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe we're supposed to do it. The handle in the packet is 1. After clock. After clock. <laughs> I don't know if after is the way. I don't know how to say after, but after with my my Philly accent. Oh, I got it right. After clock. <laughs> after cock. Uh, all right. So zero a o eight o two. I mean, I could just you know I could just throw that out there and see if it, if if the module suddenly responds to it. The DK version is backwards smart. It's an interesting way of saying it. Because we're... Okay, so what 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 is the sequence of events here? Do we still have the... I don't have the serial monitor open anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess we should just... 
just hawk this onto the cereal line, huh? What is this one called? EVT lay connection parameters. We'll just send this. And then evt lay connection parameters. Event lay connection params. Let's move these down here. Uh, timer response. Yeah, button packet we have currently is kind of like a... See, what I'm doing is I'm putting the basic form of the packets here, and then we can just throw up, you know, stuff like that. A Danish brother. It's a Dane! Oh my god, it's the Danish. Um, so in that, we want the connection parameters. I stop saying that with a southern accent. That's annoying me. <laughs> it annoys me. I have to default to radio voice. Hello. Uh, I really messed that one up. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. And that's equal to this thing. And then we are... Oh, okay. 8, 2. Uh, eight, two, and then we got the stuff. It's the stuff. Let's just grab this and just copy it for right now. The reason that this one is variable is because it will get a different ID, like a different handle, when we register multiple devices. We don't really care about the parameters, we'll just copy whatever the previous module had. All of our modules will perform exactly as the other one, but with different MAC addresses and stuff. It's just any of this information we just don't care about, we just don't care about. Like, I do not give a crap what connection parameters you want. <laughs> it does not matter to me. All I want to do is respond like I'm hitting buttons. Like when I'm doing these low-level projects, they always just become a ton of arrays of hex values. Yeah, I mean, that's how they're described in the data sheet, right? We're, we're, we have to deal with the information on a hexadecimal uh, basis. We could make them into strings, which are just secret byte arrays. So they're already there, man. <laughs> All those strings have the delimiters and stuff at the end that I just don't want to deal with, so. Yeah, I guess I could build a structure for every path. I don't want to do that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two, two, nine, seven? There's a 9-7 command that comes in after that? Because that should be... 8. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is just a totally different packet then. Whoa, whoa. Wait, no, the length is 0a. What am I thinking? So the length is um, 0a, which is 10, so it's 14. Okay, that's different. 
Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What? Oh, learning fourteen. Oh wait, Control Z. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then fifteen. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I have to use my brain. Uh, nine, and then A. So that's ten, and that's fourteen. So actually 15 is the number of positions to so be 0 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 god i hate this stuff 13 14 15 16 okay hold on <laughs> 0 a is the length why is the length at 0 a so 0 a yeah this one's this one's B. This one's actually eleven. This would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. See that works. This one's A. There's one more. It goes to the seven. Why can't I count? <laughs> why can't I chat? Why can't I count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A. Oh wait, B is actually longer. Yeah, so it would actually be to here. No, no, no. This packet's all fucked up. Everything, everything everything's probably in a bad state right now. Did I turn this off? I did. Hold on a minute. Yeah, this packet's all messed up, isn't it? Why is there so much data out out on the outlier? Because it's okay, so this is a this is a button packet, right? The button packet we know is a good packet. We know how that works. For some reason it's sending a button packet at this point. I don't know why. But we've got the four parameters that that sort of define the packet, and the length is zero B. So in hexadecimal. 9 is followed by A is followed by B. So that's 11, right? I ask myself that every time my kid wants to help with math homework. I know, it's like, do I know how to count still? I don't think I do. Um, so we are, our length is 11. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? So from 1 to 11, counting that, which is why we get confused when we need to reference values in there because the length of the thing that you're defining, you put it in as one indexed, and then uh, when you when you actually reference it, it's a zero kind of thing. Uh, um, but anyway, so so we have our eleven parameters here as laid out by this length. Well, this one is given the event lay connection parameters is given as zero a, and actually that last term can be an array which I think maybe is what's happening, but usually it's referenced in the length. What does this look like on the data sheet? That's our tried and true, deepest, bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. Um, A82, three, so A, so 82 is the lay connection parameters, right? Let's look up 82. 84, 84, Eight two. Disable slave. Wait, wait, what the fuck? Wait a minute. <laughs> this is not. Let's disable slave latency. Wait a minute. <clears throat> oh, but we're sending it. We're not receiving it. Okay, so let's look for a zero eight two. It's like the second half of the document. There you go. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, 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 no. Bring it back. A0, 82, 0, 0A, light connection parameters, interval, latency, supervision, timeout, blah, 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 maximum data channel, PDU, payload, size, it's controller can send in an air packet. 12 to 13. What? Hey, 0A, Oh, maybe minimum payload length? It goes up to 13. It's actually a 14. 
What the f- This is a jacked up packet. Uh, is this like a- That's so weird. First wake up has a- Ooh, okay, I'll have to look at that in just one sec. Hold on. But we just figured out that the packet length is, is wrong and it should feel bad. So it is actually, uh, how big is this packet? Damn it. It had 13 parameters, so it really should be 14 here. But apparently we've got 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's just like a 7 hanging out. Make any sense? Four divided by ten. PDU payload size control error data. That's so strange. Position four is the connection handle. There it is, a one. All right, so what are we looking at? I have no idea what happened to the sniffed packet. I know, it's it's all jacked up. I don't know why it's all jacked up. Because really, it should be 16 positions, but... Certainly aren't sending that many. And, if we put this through the logic of our sender, it's going to not send the whole thing. It's going to send part of that. Because it'll, it'll see that 0A, and then it'll enumerate with it. Which is, like, what the hell? <laughs> I can't believe they have a minimum payload length parameter. Ah. How do I deal with that then? I need to change that part of the packet dynamically in order to reflect so that we transmit properly? That doesn't make any sense. Although if I am just sending, how does it, how does it determine what, to, what length to send? Hold on, wait a minute. I think it, mm, I don't know, I don't know. How, does it, how do I make sure that I'm sending my whole packet? It might be using the variable that's already loaded up in order to send. So we might have just lucked out in that we're sending the right length of data. But now that we want to send, like, random stuff, we might not be sending it correctly. This is how we respond to a success. It doesn't matter. We just take the packet parameters and generically send them back. When we send stuff... In buffer, in buffer one plus four. Oh yeah, because we're the byte is the in buffer. Huh? Oh yeah, we send our full packet ready to go. Why am I adding a plus four to it? I don't need to add a plus four to it. I think I'm just sending. Minimum is a misnomer. They don't provide a mechanism for larger packets. Uh, well, the uint, uint uh, array, they, they, they define it as an array, and that's when you get longer packets in the thing. But we're not just sending the packet data. I'm sending the entire packet, so there's no header that I need in there. I don't need the plus four. The plus four is, is a misnomer. I'm writing the input buffer, starting at input buffer of 1, plus 4. Am I not sending back the right stuff? <laughs> we might have been sending back the wrong stuff every time I call upon this packet. It might not be sending anything, like, legible. Or it could just be sending junk data at the end of it. Because I'm not just I'm not sending the input buffer. In buffer is a different a different variable that I'm starting off here, and then whatever uh, array that I've put in there becomes in buffer, and then I just say send in buffer. It should just send the whole thing, not plus four. Why is it plus four? I don't think that's right. Uh, serial write array.
No, I don't want your error. I don't uh, uh, get away. Buffer and length. But the length, I just want to send the whole thing. Uh, value, string, buffer, length. See, I don't, I don't care about what's in the variables at this point because we're just writing whatever's passed in. It has all the information there. We've got everything. So I just need to send the whole buffer. If I just give it the, the buffer without a length, does that work? Value, string, buffer, length. String is a string, send as a series of bytes. Buffer, an array, send as a series of bytes. And then length is the length of the buffer. Uh, huh. So if I just give it... In buffer of one. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's where I'm reading the length. I get it. So zero, one, and then that's the length plus four. It would instead, I mean, if I just pass it in that array and I get it somehow else, uh, Arduino length of array. I'm using the packet to, to make the right thing. Oh, I have too many R's. Size of. So size of the array plus one. Do I need to do a plus one? No, I could just do si size of, and then that'll just do it. We'll do it the alternative way. And the other one works. It's just uh, now that we've got this weird extendo packet, I have no way of disabling it. So instead, it's just size of. Is that correct? Size of in buffer. Yep. Okay. That's it. We gotta see whether that works. Do a little bit of the upload thing. So we'll just send our mutant packet along. No, oh, it doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> I was afraid of that. So it it just like uh it doesn't respond to the reboots properly and so the system keeps trying to reboot it. All right, turn you back off. All right. Um Is it size of in buffer minus 1? I don't think so. Or would it be a plus one? Size of should return the size of whatever I'm passing into it. Uh, that would be not zero indexed. So the serial write, when given the buffer, should be writing to the, the exact length. It should go from one to whatever. Because it's supposed to be the size of the array. Uh... Buffer, length, length of the buffer. So in this case, uh, or rather in this example, it's been given a string with a certain length. So when we use size of, it is that length, but since we're starting at zero, we index it to the zero. So that should be fine. That's what we're doing on the other one. Size of this thing. Whatever I passed in there should have a particular size to it instead of referencing directly the thingy-majig. <laughs> what the heck, man? Why can't I code anymore? Am I dumb, chat? Chat, am I dumb? This should, this should work. 
uh, C doesn't let you get the size of an array that way. Ah, it's going to give you the size of the pointer array that it points to. That makes sense. Just bad luck when you think. Okay. <laughs> uh, so size of an array. Uh, I don't want to have to do this, man. Motherfucker. <laughs> it was nice when we had the number there give us the size, but now we have to send it something that's special. I mean, we can just have it send a special thing. It was so good before with the little buffer size thing that was able to give it a number. Everybody was happy. Um, here's what I can do. If it's a special packet, this will be the first of our special packets. And then we do How do you do default values on on stuff? Uh Will this be function uh default value Arduino? I just forget what the syntax is. So if I give it an equals, what if I, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I just, I just set it equal. Yeah. Special is equal to zero. And so if special, then we write uh do 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 uh this would be event lay connection and it is the length of 16 and 16 all the way down here i'm just gonna put it in there just as like whatever actually can i do is equal to in buffer one plus four can i put that in there If we do this, and then if I pass in my own number, I can take it over. Can't be your default, damn it. I'll just leave it like that then. That's too bad. Default can't be uh, can't be like that. Hard-coded. I don't like it, but here we are. Size of array will give you the total size of the array, meaning array 0, array 1, array 2. Uh -huh. Good pass size of in buffer over size of in buffer of 0. Oh, yeah, that's right. You divide it by the length of one entry. Shame. I don't want to run all that stuff. I'll just have a special circumstance where I set a boolean to a one or a zero so that this fails and then it'll it'll do this default. So what I what I'll do then is just have it send that one. Every every other time it runs it'll get the default. I could pass the length instead of a bool but yeah, maybe it's better if I do that. And so instead of instead of a bool, we'll just give it an int. Special is equal to zero. If special is any other value, uh, if it's if it's any other value, it's going to be true. So then that's going to do special. So if it's zero, then it'll just run default. Otherwise, it'll do the thing. 
we don't have to deal with all the weird shit that you guys are arguing about in chat. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't have to deal with that. Save, upload, and then we'll test. You son of a bitch. What did I forget to do? Did it? Hmm? Not declared in the scope. Did I blow away something all the way down here? Hold on. I might have, I might have destroyed my brackets. My brackets! No, my brackets are still good. My bracket. Void send. This thing. Int special is equal to zero default. In buffer special else serial to right. So why is sned no longer defined? I blow up another parentheses? No. Looks pretty good. In buffer entry one byte int special specials false and it does the default. Somehow uh the the default parameter is not happy with me. Yeah, this should be exactly the right usage. It just doesn't accept the default parameter as not being defined. Why is that? And so something something I'm doing in that syntax, huh? I mean, they seem to be pretty uh, happy with that. Fine, and then do the thing. What the hell? Whatever. Uh. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Back. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And this should be totally acceptable. Well, this isn't C. This is this is Arduino. Did you put the prototype at the top? You need to do this? Oh, that's so weird. Okay. So that needs to be put at the top. Huh, okay, all right, well, I can just... Do they all need default values if that's the case? What if I don't have a default value for this? Uh, where are we? We are at... This is just making it more complicated and I wanted it to, it was nice and simple before you know let's take this copy it put the prototype at the top I think there was already a prototype up here wasn't there no nah. I'll just I'll just sneak it in with these guys sneak it in with those guys and then we get one of these and then we what do we do we just yeah we don't give it parents Oh, we don't have to... Okay, so we don't have to declare all of them with... Okay, we just need the one is... Okay, all right, all right. All right, so that should do it. Oh, yeah, but if we're calling it there... All right, Tiago! Thank you! <laughs> Careful now. Getting dangerously close to backseating. It's okay though. All right, save it. Oh my god, I control Z it. Uh, redo. <laughs> Upload it quick before I screw it up. Stand up. Okay, so now we've got our default value that we can override for the packet length. Let's see if we can send the right thing. Why did they change it up like that? Why not just make the packet have the appropriate length? Yeah, we're back where we started. Damn it! <laughs> well, we got the connect ID. 
we sent our special packet and then we don't receive anything else as a result. You think the example packet that I have is wrong? That's possible, but we were able to look up the packet. And when we looked up the packet in the data sheet, it told us that the event results, in spite of having a minimum payload length of 10, is actually 13 long. 14, 15, 16, 17. Might be that it's actually 17 long. I might have to actually add those zeros on the end. That may be what's wrong. Uh-oh. Rut row. Only back up we go. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny module. Uh, where is this thing? 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then zero, 0, at the end. 17. Packet length defines what comes after the header. Yes. But in the data sheet, they list it from 0. So there's the header, and then it's 8 beyond the header. Eh, wait. 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. Oh, no, sorry, A, 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 A beyond the header. So A would be 10, 14. This thing lists it to 13. <clears throat> it's all confusing because of the index numbers, yeah. Starting at zero, that would be correct. You're right, you're right, you're right. So then we have been sending the right thing the whole time, and we don't need a special cases. Yeah, total of 14. Yeah, it's a language thing. If you if you rephrase it like that, it, it makes more sense. That's a good call. But yeah, total payload length of 14 total bytes indexed at 0. So 0A does work in that case. So I am confused. But in that case, regardless of what's been going on, we've been transmitting the right thing. Whatever we found in our serial readout, it was weird. Uh, because we have way more information than that in here. But according to the way that this is structured, the number that we're sending is 10. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it should end at the 2. 970 is there, and we don't know why. This is fucky. The whole thing is just fucky. But we need this in order to get on to the next step. Yeah, the first wake up. Yeah, that, that was the next step if, if we had struggled on this, and which we are. So, <laughs> I guess I'm going to leave in the special packet length just in case. I don't think that'll ever be necessary, though. No, we should get rid of it. Because it's it should not be necessary to do that. This is a very rigid structure for the packages, so there really should not ever be a, a violation of that structure. And so we've coded in a way to violate the structure. It's wrong! So let's get rid of that. Um, we know how to do default values now. It's just this code is getting monstrous as we keep working with it. It's getting monstrous, chat. My head has been like floating today. I'm I'm actually kind of tired. Uh, so we can get rid of this. We will have to restructure our send depending on what we find in the data sheet. This is how it this is how it works though. This is how like it, it's funny to kind of reflect on this. Like our code is monstrous at this point, right? But this started as just like a simple way to respond and print out the packages. I really wish 
that I had come up with a little bit more of this methodology when we still had both devices working, because then we could have gotten our own uh, curated printout of what the packets are, what the exchange looks like, you know? That would have been so much better, and I wish we could have done that. If the packet structure was a little bit more evident, and maybe if we had actually, because we took like a half a second to look at the data sheet and went, uh, and then moved on. If we had taken a little bit more time to look at the API, I know, I murdered Module Chan at this point, because that's what I was building up to. We jumped the gun a little bit here. Do I have any soda that isn't fucking... I have seltzer water, okay. I have, I have like Red Bulls, and I don't think I feel like being more wired. Oh no, never mind. That's what I... Ah, my half gallon of uh, green tea. <coughs> it's all Wawa's good for, and a lot of the time they don't have it. But yeah, I was, I was working on making like a, a smarter packet listener. And uh, I did not run across the structure of this until we were working on it, working on the post post mortem of the uh, the module. So this is the way it, the way it happened. We could have had a more intelligent printout. What about the gobbler? They don't have it. Not right now, right? Do they have the gobbler year round now? Buddy of mine got one of those. He was extremely out of his mind, and he didn't even remember eating it. <laughs> like, it was the best hoagie I've ever had in my entire life, and I don't even remember eating it. So we send command legap connect. Um, before we do that, well, this would be... Wait, what? Oh, yeah, we have two different packets that we send. Uh, let's comment that out for now. Let's go back down to our... The gobbler's a like a like a turkey gravy hoagie that Wawa does for uh, Thanksgiving. It's a local thing. It's Thanksgiving on a roll. It really is. You get it with a, like a horseradish sauce. If well, I like it with a horseradish sauce on it. Depending on how, how much of a degenerate I am, I'll modify that and add other stuff, too. Keep it local. It's good! It's actually tasty. I haven't had one in eons. Alright, so we're back to simple mode. Simple mode, we're not getting the right reply because our serial data goes all funky. I'm gonna... That was not much of a burp. What's the 3D printer doing? I think this stuff will just come off of it now. I gotta keep running the printer because we're tr we're working towards doing the computer build on Thursday, and in order to do that, everything needs to be as smooth as absolutely possible. So I need to get all of my outside panels printed so that we can do the construction. Because I need my computer on Saturday, and uh, I'm not gonna be streaming. All right, so that one's picked up. What other outward-facing panels do I got? Um, I need to do the little fan thing on the front and then the one that goes around this one's going to be one of the more complicated ones and i'm actually going to need my fusion 360 back for it so we got to go over to the computer over here just so i can do my my workflow for 3d printing the stuff after fusion is what happens uh you know what i do kind of on my own i i export these into a folder on the other computer Soon they'll be exported into a folder on my other other computer. This one. Dun, 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 dun. So I gotta open up Fusion, the other computer. Waiting. Waiting for it to close. Waiting for it to close. Open up bus. I gotta wait for it to like fully close out because otherwise it's gonna lock me out of the other computer. And then I'll get the next piece of this puzzle. These are still looking pink though. I'd be very disappointed when I put this whole computer together and it looks pink. <laughs> I didn't make a pink PC this time. All right, so what we're looking for is uh, first wake up in the data sheet. Is it not in this one? Oh, in the captures, sorry.
this stuff. So whatever this jumble soup is, we need to look through here to figure out what some of these packets are, because this might have been, this might have been just a uh, a mistake. All right, so one sec here. One second, I'm gonna open up this project on my slightly better computer that's soon to become my really good computer. Air cool upgrades, and then we're looking at. Uh, which ones haven't I done? I did, these are for the front, these are for the side, those are for the top. So we need to do the, the power supply one, which needs a lot of supports, and then we need to do the fan one, which doesn't get any supports. It doesn't need them, it's all flat. So that would be that one, and then this one. And then I'm gonna output, is that one? Okay, I can do just one side of that. Bodies, and then this one. Not the lowers, I need the uppers. Sorry, I know this isn't the most uh, exciting thing in the world, but this is a very necessary step that I'm going through right now. That one, and then... This one right here. All I'm doing is clicking saving as mesh, and then I'm saving them into a folder. And then I drag and drop the stuff from that folder into Super Slicer. And then Super Slicer does the rest of the job for me. And I, I basically just directly hit send to printer. So from there, I'm going to my folder on the desktop. When I'm in people's streams, like talking, this is generally what I'm doing on the other, on, on my end, is like setting up this kind of stuff. This is the stuff that I do like on Wednesday, but I, I desperately want to get this stuff done so that we have something to do on Thursday. I'm planning ahead, chat. <laughs> I'm planning ahead. I'm actually responsible. 180. There. That can be placed, hopefully, there. Yeah, that one slices. Well, it says that it should be able to do the chamfer properly. I have my doubts but we'll leave it up to that. See, the whole thing is I put this chamfer on the outside of this piece because it sticks out from the side of the computer. Pro streamer. <laughs> Something like that. <coughs> okay. So you're thinking that this is the packet. AOA. AOA. How's it going? Uh, so why is there all this garbage then? It looks like it's like trying to send, like there's a 9-6. What is a 9-6? Remember, we're only seeing one end of this communication because I fucked up and I killed the module. We could have made a system that would print out the entire bi-directional handshake and we could have copied that. But no, because your streamer's awesome. He fucking blew it up with a battery. I have, I have so many regrets. Okay, uh, <laughs> control F, two, and then we're looking at, we're looking for a A0, so it's a response, but then we're looking at a nine, six. No, yes. Wait, that's length three? One, two, three, and then we got a 229900. That does make sense, actually. So this might be a series of packets where it's it's saying, it's responding, and then it's it's saying something. So let's just see what's going on. So I'm looking at nine six, nine six and nine nine. So we're looking for an O nine, and this one is an A zero. So we need to we need to go way down in the list here. Because that was a twenty nine six. We don't care about that. Nine five. That was a nine eleven. Wait, that was a nine nine. Go back. Nine nine. Uh, oh two would be the payload length, minimum payload length. Right characteristic value, but that's not properly structured. It's a that's supposed to be a length of four. This one's a length of three. So it'd be a handle with no. I don't know. I'm going through the signal 
from the from the start and I'm just going to look at what's being said here cuz these are proper lengths 3 and then it would be 0 1 2 this one's 2 0 0 oh wait that was 9 9 why is the length of 2 <laughs> these are improper <laughs> They're like formatted correctly, but they're improper values. It's like, I don't know, something in their code is running weird? I don't know. 9-9, nine, nine, right characteristic value. It needs that value. It gets the handle and then the value, but like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? That's weird. Oh, but wait, that's the... 20, yeah, 2299, huh. And then we're looking for 96, for an A096. A0, oops, wait a minute. Okay, that's a 20. We are leveling our bed right now. Did I leave stuff on the bed? Uh, it looks relatively clear. Okay. 9-2. We're looking for 9-6. 9-4, 9-3, 9-5. 9-6. Uh, event. Event gap procedure completed. Caesar procedure? See, we don't get this, though, because my thing would have printed out that packet because we, we don't recognize what it is. It would have printed this out. So it's not telling us that the procedure is complete. That, uh, that's interesting. Gat procedure complete, though. So what is it saying? Procedure complete. Handles is 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So oh, 01. And then the five and six is success code. So zero is success. So what it's saying right here is that the procedure is complete and we're good. Oh, yeah. So we'd send this. Let's make that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just tell it, hey, we're good. Except, uh, does it then send a, set a timer or anything? Because it looks like we got a bunch of other packets that so we need to figure out what they are. That event is set as a result of the command get discover characteristics. I mean, we have the, I don't think we do a discover, right? Or the, it should be sending us a discover. We don't get that. Right characteristic value. Indicates that the current GAT procedure was completed successfully or that it failed with an error. All GAT commands ex excluding GAT right characteristic value without response and Send characteristic confirmation will trigger this event. Ah, so yeah, this is a this is an important one. We need to send this. Yeah, we need to send that. <coughs> Weird that it goes back into it though. But it says right characteristic value nothing. <laughs> so then we say, uh, all right. <laughs> Why is it 9-7, though? 9-1, GAT service. Huh, weird. GAT MTU exchange, 9-0? No. God, this is complicated. All right, so we need to send that the procedure's been completed for handle 1, so that may need to be a variable in the future. Uh, 
Uh, I didn't really define these in the code, did I? Where's my code? There it is. I mean, do we just, like, puke out all this stuff? Because it's like, we didn't even get any response from the base station from this. So, I guess we just puke it all out. Well, let's make our, let's make our thing up here. So, uh, handle then UUID. Yeah, so it's like, uh, bite. And this would be the response, and that's doot doot. <coughs> one of these, one of these. Okay, missed. I missed. And then we're calling it Prevent Legat Procedure. And that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's equal to that. And then supposedly we have a proper. <laughs> Isn't the timer for that? Yeah, I don't know. We don't give it that it's completed though. Well, and I hear a lot of a lot of hurking from the printer. What is it doing? Uh oh wow, it's already gotten that much done. Alright. I kinda wanted this to like to like move away so I can see. Where are you with this? This I think this is still layer one, right? Yeah, it's still layer one. I am shocked at how well it's printing on glass right now, but I'm not going to, like, uh, I'm not going <laughs> to let sleeping dogs lie. Let's not figure out why it's so good. Um, event late connection parameters. I mean, we don't get a response from that, right? So if we send that or not, it doesn't matter. What if we just send it complete procedure? What if we just, like, fake it? Because it seems like multiple things are happening here, and... It's like getting confused and it's doing weird stuff. So let's just send it a complete code and see what happens. We'll go all the way down here to our little algorithm. We're just going to tell it that we're done. We're done with this crap. Send that. See if I give a shit. And then, uh, let's do, transmit, uh, and then procedure completed. Seven, blah, 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 blah. Completed, and then our serial readout will be a little bit different. Maybe we'll get... Yeah, but wait, this happens as a result of the other one? But we send it the gap connect. We're not told. Oh no, we get a command gap connect. We verify that we got the right signal, and then we send the, the procedures over. We're done, we're done working. Okay, so this is this is the complexity that we did not have before. This is this is the part of the the this is where the rubber meets the road or whatever. And hopefully it won't be as sloppy as, as what we observed from the other the other module. Because if any of this stuff goes wrong, we don't really have like states that'll verify stuff. What did I do wrong? Oh my god, it's not declared in the scope, but it shouldn't be necessary to do that. Do I really have to like do I have to do this now? I don't understand. I guess maybe we put send into something where it shouldn't have been. All right, well, just give me the send again. Where is that? Oh, whoops, I didn't get rid of this. That's why. We don't need this. That's what I forgot to do. Knew I was forgetting something. 
Fight in buffer. In buffer of the location of one plus the four. That should work again. Let's upload that. Boop. Get booped. You son of a bitch. I cannot believe that you have done this to me. Invalid types. Bite. Huh? Wait. Wait, what? Huh? In buffer, in buffer of one plus four, what changed? Uh, do I need to do a... Oh, does it need to have a star? Do I need to do this? I forget what I had here before. <laughs> I did an aggressive delete, yeah. I do that. That happens. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I think it was just, I think it was this. Okay, it, it's happy about that now. All right, let's see where we get to in the procedure. Three, two, one, go. Hey, wait, something happened. Now, nope, same things. So we got the right, wait, ID2 and ID1, huh? Oh no, timer, timer two stopped. Uh, gap connect one, gap procedure complete, transmitted, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Chat, what if we held hands at the base station? Uh, where's the, this S we need to change. <laughs> No, I don't want every letter S. Whatever. T for transmit. Okay, well, anyway. Um, interesting. So, we sent a packet. We didn't replace the handle in the packet, but that's okay. It's, it should be fine, because the handle's still one. And we sent it, according to our notes, one of the signals that should have been sent about now. But there may be some other things going on here. Like, this is getting sent again as well. <clears throat> and this. And this. But that's the base station telling it that it wants to do stuff. So it says, hey, the GAT procedure's completed. And then it's saying, write this characteristic value. And then it's saying some other stuff, and we don't really know what it is. I call this junk. It's not junk. It turns out this is the handshake. Uh, boy, oh boy. A lot of stuff, but we haven't gotten anything back from the base station yet. Which is odd now we're not are we getting it stuck into a state are we not we are coming back and doing everything that we should do i mean this happens very quickly and then it breaks and then it'll run this again and again and again so it's always checking to see if any of these other packet things are being done i'm gonna have to think about this a little bit guys I'm running out of steam here because my whole workshop is, is powered by steam. It's actually, I've got a furnace and uh, there's two guys in there shoveling coal. That's their whole job. They just shovel coal into a big burner uh, and there's just like steam. There's a, you guys can't hear it because I have it on the, the mic filters, but there's a, like a chugging noise that happens in order to keep this place going. If they shovel faster, that just means I have more available electricity. I'm not doing anything with it. Um... But yeah, those guys, those guys, they do good at the job. They do, they do good work. Um, yeah, I'm kind of running out of steam. I, I don't, I don't know what's going on with this thing at this point. I mean, we can compare it to, um, question mark, question mark, question mark. We can compare it to the data sheet, uh, based on the signals that we've seen in our sniffing. <sighs> It would be nice to find something like an Arduino library for this. 
because that means that I can see how the Arduino library, it's so hard to read other people's codes and stuff. Um, if I could find somebody else that's worked with a Blue Gecko module in order to get a remote device connected, I could possibly see what a log is supposed to look like um, and the procedure, like what the, what, the, what the steps are for this whole thing. I have a feeling they exist, or maybe there's just simpler modules that people use, because this is a lot of stuff. And I think at a certain point, I, I, I believe, and I'm not sure about this, it seems like the base station should be telling the module to give it a battery level and to give it a, uh, like an RSSI at a certain interval. And we haven't seen that happen yet, uh, not even in the log. So we've got more signals that I need to get through, and I guess I need to do a bunch of reading on Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, I'm going to try to get everything together in order to build the computer on Thursday. That'll be a fun day. Fun, fun, fun. Maybe I'll clear this stuff off just for the day. I'll, I'll see if I can shove it in the corner a little bit more, and then we'll uh, we'll work on putting together the, the PC. I've got a little bit of a... Uh... Yeah, it's challenging with that module chain. With module chain here, we could have just gotten a direct log of every valid packet that was that was being exchanged. That would have been a one-time thing, and I could have basically taken my code and just put it to the default and then had it print out the, the ones and zeros from two different channels. That would have been really easy to do. And that's what I was working towards until, you know, I fucked up the module. Man, that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. I'm not going to spend $70 on another module, but we can, we can figure this out. It's become a little bit more of a puzzle than anything else now. Uh, but hopefully those of you who don't understand what I'm doing have a little bit of an idea of what it's like to, you know, like hardcore reverse engineer a thing. We just need to pretend to be something that we're not, and we need to send ones and zeros in an appropriate way. So the Arduino has helped us out with that. It's helped us organize and structure sort of the process that we need to go through in order to make this thing into a viable um, fake device. One of, one of the things that we could do as well is plug the module in. No, we can't do that anymore. Wait a minute, never mind. We can't just plug the module in and fake it. We need, we're at the point where we're actually doing a handshake between the two, between the two things. And so that handshake needs to look right. It needs to respond properly and at the right points. So we can't just fake uh, being the base station and having it connect. Darn. I mean, I could have had it so that the module connects and then we send serial packets to kind of pretend to be the module. It just, oh man, it kills me. We, we've got a pretty good idea of all the packets that are swimming around. If we can get the right one to get a response out of this thing, then we're, we're pretty gold, golden, like we're good to go. Uh, I think there's going to be just a little bit more pulling teeth in that regard. And so I am going to take this opportunity to, to have a break line in the stream right now. So you guys know what I'm all about. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm printling. I know OctoJ wants me to just have a stream where I'm just printing. That's it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I might. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that because it's too boring. But uh, yeah, printing. I'm printing parts for Thursday. We're thinking about how the hell the serial packets work on this stupid thing. Uh, and then I guess we're going to come back on Thursday and hopefully build a computer. Uh, do all the, at least do all the hardware. I think we'll get to the software as well. I've got all my numbers written down and I'm just going to pull the plug on the old computer. And then we got to do a drive to drive transfer to get my gaming drive up. And then we'll uh, install Windows on the previously gaming drive. That's the plan. Until then, you guys can catch me in Discord. I'm not certain if OctoJ is keeping up with the commands. I'll get them if he's not. Uh... No, he is up on the... Man, OctoJ, good guy. He does all his... He does good work, man. Sculpt his life-size Cthulhu mutant human baby tonight. Okay, Demi, you, you do what you gotta do, man. I'm not... I don't... I don't judge. Judge a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Demi, though, you guys don't know, Demi does, like, a lot of really crazy horror sculpting. He's got the horror stuff in his brain. You'd be good, uh, like, on the special effects for your movie. Anyway, check me out at Discord if you guys get a chance. That's where I'll be. That's, that's where I spend my off time. I do literally nothing. Um, I actually, when the stream's off, I stare at the wall. Uh, 
but sculpt me like one of your mutant babies. So ending on that note, I'll see you guys on Thursday.